awesome to t- tune in to ESPN at noon. And I'm not a Red Sox fan, but to see people going to Fenway Park, that was a special thing to see people going way back when to Turner Field, to Yankee Stadium, whatever. And and you would see fam- you know, fathers and mothers with their kids, and it was a special day. And for some reason, somehow, some way, ESPN's lost those rights. Major League Baseball TV, MLB TV is not on YouTube TV. And it's I don't quite understand how Major League Baseball has managed to screw up their opening day to the point where I'll I and I and and, and quite frankly, I'm not even gonna see it because there's other things going on, will <clears throat> excuse me, not really participate in opening day of Major League Baseball. Like and, and I say I'm not gonna watch it tonight is the Cubs and the Rangers. Well, guess what else is on? South Carolina baseball plays a big series against Alabama down in Tuscaloosa. Uh, the NCAA tournament takes place tonight. I will be locked into uh, Arizona and Clemson. It's a great sporting weekend, and Major League Baseball should be celebrating opening another season. And yet, to me, to me, and I can't speak for all of you, and I can't speak for Preston or Jen, it'll be on the back burner. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, obviously, we understand this is all about television rights, and uh, Major League Baseball was one of the first to go local with their regional sports deals, and that's not working out great for everybody who's with Bally Sports Network. We'll see how that how that pans out. But it's definitely for the viewing experience for the general public, yes. It's still an in-person thing where people are still going to the ballparks. Ballparks are still open, and so if that's something that people choose to do, they can. But baseball has chosen to go the route of making their um, – making their viewing, putting it behind a paywall, essentially. And this might be a clue for what the rest of the sporting world is going to. We've seen it. We've seen it happen with the NFL. We'll see it coming up with college football. Um, this is something that, that will, be, will be going on. The thing about, the, about baseball was, whether it was the Cubs or the Cubs and the Braves specifically, is that they were on these general TV channels, and that's why they had such broad appeal to everybody because you knew you could watch the Cubs at 1 o'clock and you would see Harry Carey singing the you know the seventh inning stretch. You know the Braves was going to be on at 7.05 uh, Eastern time on, on TBS. And so a lot of people got into them just for the fact that they were available. Now they're not just available. You have to go seek them out. And there's – Pluses and minuses for doing that as a business. So we'll see. But it is opening day, though. It is it is opening day. And opening day is cool because it's like, man, if we – could we go undefeated this year? If yeah. we win the first game, maybe we'll be 162-0. and 0. Uh, What's going to happen this year? Everybody's 0-0. Everybody's in first place. Hope springs eternal. I heard them coming in that they said that a record number of teams are – or possible contending for the playoffs this year, which I don't know about. Um, but everybody does f- – well, that's not true because there is a, there are teams in the MLB right now who are having an opening day like, this is the best it's going to be all year. Yes. We're going to be terrible. That is the odd thing about Major League Baseball is that, yes, they, they are, oh, there are certain teams out there that are opening and they're like, this, this is the high point this right is, here. This is the best. This is, this, is, this, is, this is the best we're going to have right here. Yeah, there's, there's, your, there's your opening day. Detroit Tigers. Detroit's sneaky good in a bad division. I've been paying attention now. Uh, right there, there, there's your one. Our buddy Anthony, who's on our, our live stream, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh and Miami today, 4 Soak it up. Uh, Pittsburgh needs to enjoy. They're not even opening in their their home ballpark today. Uh, they they are Oakland. I, I mean, is, is Cleveland is at Oakland tonight? Ten oh seven is Cleveland. Excuse me, is Oakland? Is this it? Like, do you celebrate this day if you know you're losing your franchise? That this is one of the last. We can either do this one way: either we uh, boycott and don't go, or we all go. Um, and really have a good time with it, and I and I'd be fine with either side for them. But two they're ga- not they're not going to Vegas, by the way. Okay, okay. I'd be interested. To, it's not going to happen. We'll, we'll keep an eye on Will that. Will not happen. Mark it down. But uh, Milwaukee and New York, the Mets uh, postponed already, and the Braves were scheduled to open at three ten today in Philadelphia. That game has been postponed, so the Braves and the Phillies will officially get going tomorrow. Uh, when they hook up there and Spencer Strider will be on the mound against Zach Wheeler tomorrow. So we'll talk baseball. We will talk a little baseball because it's a it is a day. It, it's not a season, Preston, that I get into, but it is a day. But we're, we're going to try. We're going to try our love for baseball this year. Right. 
since I've, since I've got the the first team all state baseball player here, we're going to do more. I mentioned the other the other thing tonight: South Carolina and Alabama. And I, I'm not going to call this a must win series or a you know a must win game because you play three of them, but this is a a big series for them on the road. I, I kind of equate in a different way this to what we did with Mark Kings uh, with with Lamont Paris back in January where these are games that if you lose it doesn't really change your season but if you win it builds the fan base and it builds what we think you can be if that makes sense or is that just is that just too sensical no that makes plenty of sense people people were not paying attention right they come up with the sweep last weekend and now people are like, okay, do I want to get in? Do I want to get on? Should I be starting to pay more attention? It's an opportunity for them to build momentum for what the season can be. That can help with the winning of the series and or a sweep. Losing to the series, people are not all the way in. That's just the fact of the reality where the fan base is right. with Coach Kingston and the program. And so they need to build on these wins to get people to start believing. So a big series for them this weekend. That'll be Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So tonight, tomorrow. And Saturday, we'll talk about that a little bit this morning. As, as Preston mentioned, we've got our chop block, chop talk coming up. We'll talk some Braves, let you listen to a little bit of Bryant Snitker and what he had to say earlier this week on the MLB Network. Toby Edwards of the Carolina Cup set to join us this morning. Justin Mackey was on with us last week. Preston and you unfortunately didn't have it. You, you didn't have a chance to be here and talk to him. So you're going to quiz him this week being a referee. I have questions. And it's, yeah, we'll, we'll get into it with Justin Mackey this morning. And then Josh Harris from Darlington Raceway will join us there. We're, we're creeping down. We're creeping down to uh, Darlington being here. It's going to be upon us. That Sunday will be upon us before we know it. 803-404-6100. That's how you can weigh in if you so choose to do so this morning. Let's get out to the Love Chevy phone lines. Gamecock Larry, as always, wants to weigh in. Gamecock Larry, how you doing? Feeling good, feeling good. Let me tell you, if we're going to go to Alabama, win three, we'll be 3-0. The ladies are going to win two, be 2-0, two 5-0. Oh, oh. The Clemson basketball is going to lose and come home. We, I'm going to be 6-0. And, oh. and all the rest, I don't know what they're going to be, but there's the main three, 6-0. Oh. When I call in Monday morning, I'll be crowing, li- crowing loud and kicking high. Go game, Cox. Love all y'all. Oh, yeah, I'm a drafter team and motocross. Those of me going up the Union this weekend, I think, if it don't rain. But everything's going to be all right. Oh, game, Cox. It's going to be flying high Monday morning. Go game, Cox. Love all y'all. There you go, flying high. Everything's going to be all right. He got a, a little Bob Marley in there as well this morning. It's a good way to start. Big, uh, big weekend that would be six and zero. I think we would all come in here very excited. And I love how you counted a Clemson loss as a win. I'm, I'm kind That's of how pulled, you boost I'm, the stats. I don't, is it is it okay to pull for a coach and not a team, or is it one and the same? I That's, think you can because I there's. There's a team that I prefer the team over the coach. I want the team to do well. Team over the coach. You're going the other way. Yeah, I go the other way sometimes. Mm, that's interesting. I got to know. What is that? Who is that? I can't tell you. Got a weird secret. Are you holding I back know, there behind the glass? It's a strange kind of, I just, uh, yeah. But there, there's a team that I just, I really prefer the team to the coach. And I, I so I'm wondering, maybe that's not normal. Maybe you just do cheer for the coach but i mean i i liked bruce pearl a couple well, last weekend i like bruce pearl i didn't like auburn i didn't like his team at all uh-huh and and i really don't have anything against the actual clemson basketball team like i don't like auburn was annoying auburn it's kind of like in lsu we call the team annoying but we also don't like the coach yeah the coach is yep. annoying they're both they're equally annoying uh auburn that basketball team was annoying. Like, did not like them, but I liked Bruce Pearl. Clemson, I think I'm not supposed to like Clemson, but I do really like Bruce Pearl. I'm kind of hoping that like Gamecock Larry goes five and five and two this weekend. So you want Brad Bruno to continue? I would love to see Clemson in the Final Four. Okay. Okay. I know that's not what I'm. I know all those 
people out there, oh, my gosh, on, on the home of the Gamecocks, that guy's saying he wants Clemson. I, I like Brad Burnell. I'm a Brad Burnell fan, and I kind of like that Clemson fans didn't like him and that he right now is basically just making a little run through the NTA tournament. I'm excited about tonight's game. I'm excited about tonight's basketball to go on. I just went on a tirade about baseball and then we got into breaking down a little bit of the Gamecocks and the Crimson Tide tonight in baseball. I'm excited about tonight's basketball game. Uh, it's something worth being excited about. We're in, we're in the later rounds. We're into when people are starting to get eliminated, people's brackets are busted. It's interesting to see. There's a lot to get to. Let's go. We'll do it. 803-404-6100. Preston Thorne, Bill Gunner, Xi Jin Jensen. It is the early game. Bill Gunner for the mortgage guru, Jacob Crowder with First Palmetto Bank. If you are thinking about building a home this year, you're thinking about refinancing, if you're thinking about doing any of those things, you need to contact the mortgage guru, Jacob Crowder with First Palmetto Bank. First Palmetto Bank is locally owned and operated, meaning they have decision makers right here in town that can get you quick and precise underwriting. And with the housing market stabilizing, now is the time to call the mortgage guru and Find out what he can do for you. 803-719-1005. That's how you can reach him. Jacob helped me a few years ago. And you know what? I personally recommend how he handles things, the way he gets back to you, and what he does to get you the best deal possible. So, for example, if you're thinking about building a home, First Palmetto Bank has a non a no-nonsense construction loan that you can take advantage of. Learn more today by calling the mortgage guru, 803-719-1005.
Looking a little better out on the highways this morning from uh, yesterday. No accidents to report at this time. Hope it stays that way for your Thursday morning commute. Clouds will be on the decrease today. 66 will be our high. 72 with sunny skies tomorrow up to 77 on Saturday. Then we get a run for a couple days of the low 80s. So that kind of, I'm, I'm saying that'll be a good thing as we are making our way into April. But right now, it's a little bit overcast and 55 on the early game. Well, I've angered some people, Preston. I've angered some people right off the bat. Uh, a, a couple texters weighing in. Uh, yes, this is all caps. All caps. This is when you know you've you've done a good job at 6 a.m. when you get the all caps text message. Yes, you do. They are still Clemson. Who are you, Bill? It's fair. Another anonymous texter. Now the home of the Gamecocks are annoying. Clemson lovers. Fair. Uh, don't no 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 no! Don't say the home of the Gamecocks. Say Bill G U N T E R. Brad, I'm a Brad Brunell fan, uh, and the co-pilot says anything Clemson is annoying, but the fans don't want Brunell, but he's winning. It's like the quote: "The enemy of my enemy is my friend." So I guess since Brad Brunell is their enemy, I friend him as well. Yeah, you just like the guy. It's cool. It's 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 no problem. You can wish him well. You don't have to wish his franchise well or his institution well. <laughs> Bingo. 803-404-6100 is how you can weigh in on that. Uh, yeah, we've got Major League Baseball opening day. It loses a little luster because the Braves aren't playing today. I was fired up to to get that. I do think, going back to my television rant, I think that I'm going to just go ahead, bite the bullet, and invest in the MLB TV that they have. The thing about baseball is it's uh, obviously it's a long season, but what is thrilling and joyful about baseball season is you just get to know the players over the years. You get to figure out who's the middle reliever. Guys go through slumps, and you watch that. You kind of can come in. It's a good background noise when yes. you're doing things. That's sort of the th I'm I'm pretty sure there's not a lot of people that just tuned in, locked in on all 162. But if you just have it playing around, you listen to guys getting pulled up from the minor leagues, there's all types of storylines. And that's the way you follow a season, as you just sort of follow along with the things that are happening and as the stories are developing. So, yeah, the pro it probably is best to have some sort of access so that you can catch a random Wednesday Day night doubleheader or whatever the case is, and be following along as the season goes. You talked a little bit about uh, the the direction potentially. Well, and I think we've talked about it slightly. The direction of sports, as far as televising goes, as far as television, with streaming. Have you ever purchased like I I did for I bought for Austin, my son, because he has gotten into the NBA more. I bought the league pass. I bought it for the last two months. It was like it was like fourteen dollars a month. I was like, hey, this is. We can we can we can drop twenty eight dollars over over March and February uh, March and April to purchase this, and I'll admit I've gotten into it a little bit. I, now I accidentally I think I was telling you the other day I keep watching Pistons games and I'm not sure why because they are awful awful, um, but I have actually gotten into it having access to like Flipper and I'm interested to see if I do this with baseball as well where on a random Wednesday night I'm flipping around and somehow end up on a Mariners Angels game that I'm questioning myself but I can't tune away from yeah you just figure out who's coming in the town it's like oh the miami marlins are town okay <laughs> didn't know if you talk about jazz chisholm today all right <laughs> and you just watch it and i think it's the access it's very much I think so, yeah. because it's on you just pay attention to more stuff instead of the games that are dictated towards you you know they want you to see the marquee games and those are fine but oftentimes the really interesting stuff is in the midweek games and off 
center market so it's like oh okay this is and it's almost I, I don't know if people do this when they go to their offices and it but you almost have a small bragging right you're like yeah i was I was watching the Marlins and the Cardinals last night. Somebody's like, are you a Marlins or a Cardinals fan? Are you into it? Like, no, I was just watching it. Had it on. You have it on? No, you didn't? Okay. No, yeah, I was watching it. I, I'll be interested. Uh, it, 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 again, we will, we will start what is, what is honestly the long slog, and it's long, through baseball season. But we want to cover it a little bit more and watch it and, and get into it a little bit today. Bill, you have a TV rant? I have a bigger rant with opening day. Oh? Where is it? You say it's not on TV, but where is it in the real world? Because with travel baseball and all of these different tournaments that continue year-round, is there a such thing as opening day? Back in my day, Bill, oh. there was a thing called opening day, and all the players in the town would get dressed up in their nice little uniforms, and you would have a little parade, and you would walk around, and you'd see all the people on opening day, and it'd be a nice thing, and everybody would play on the same opening day at the same field because there was only two of them, and you might be on field A or field B, and the Georgia's discount Braves will be playing the the Myers uh the Myers Milk Brewers and they would just be playing each other and it was opening day and we knew cause you all had your colors we, everybody knew what oh you're on the yellow team this year you're on the blue team this year wow that's why Bill you're playing this year I thought you didn't play again this year all of that stuff was happening all day so you say opening days disappeared from MLB but I want to know where it's opening day in the real world I it's love st- that strong take mm-hmm. Very strong. Does it exist? Can it exist? Not the same when you're just playing a random tournament in Florence. It's not opening day. So it's what just I, another tournament. What I tell you, I don't know. We didn't, we, we, Austin, my son, didn't really do the baseball thing. We did it mm-hmm. a little. I think we actually only did fall ball, to be honest. I don't even mm-hmm. think we did spring ball. Um, fall ball opening day don't count. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I, no, it, you're right. It is different. The spring is opening day. Is spring the is day. opening day. And and to Preston's point, you're right. There was in Lexington. Lexington's a huge baseball town. Growing up, opening day was a huge deal. A lot of the parents would. A lot of the parents fun. Draw, would drag us kids to Quincy's in in Lexington, the old Quincy's, for breakfast, and then the dads who coached they would go out and they would scout. Even even in coaches' pitch, they would scout the other teams, and we would be at the ballpark, and you weren't allowed to get your pants dirty. You had the white pants. You weren't allowed to get your pants dirty until pictures came. And if you had the 3 o'clock game and you were out there at 9 or 10 a.m. and you had to keep those pants clean, that was quite a problem. Yes. Yeah, diff- very they, difficult. They tried to, with, from what I remember with Trent, yeah, they tried to get them in the morning, like all the pictures done early you know even before the opening ceremonies and things like that uh, that that was a difficult thing to to challenge because yeah <laughs> if they did play especially little kids how do you keep them clean yeah because i'm just gonna go there's dirt over there of course i got like slide the, yeah. the moms the moms would have all of us basically like on a leash almost we were we were almost like you know the little kids they get the leash and we couldn't go too far you are you make a good point opening day opening day uh jonathan says opening day in lakes and meant picture day as well yeah i mean mm-hmm. It's only for little kids now, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. If I think, it I think for, they still do it, that. I don't does know. Does it still exist? Because I don't. Because we don't really have rec leagues like that anymore. So I don't know if it still exists. It's a good question. It's another reason why you shouldn't play travel ball because there's no opening day. There is. You could. You should make. They should make more of it an opening day, shouldn't they? You have to go out to your ballpark as kids. You have to sit on the bleachers. Then you were trying to eat your hot dog or something with ketchup. Yeah. Not again. Not get it on your jersey. Yeah, or everybody, pants. everybody gets a ketchup and a juice or something, and you just <laughs> you're sitting there and you're getting ready. And if you're super competitive, I'm like, oh, James Triola's on the yellow team this year. All right, that's right. Mm-hmm. It, there was also that level where you'd go to elementary school and you talk about what team are you on? Mm-hmm. What color is your jersey? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, we got you in week two. Yeah. All right, we get you. Eight oh three four zero four. 6,100 opening day in Major League Baseball. It's still similar. They just don't do the pictures. They don't They don't have picture day. They should do that. They should trot all of them out and have a picture day. And you get to watch in, in, in opening day in Major League Baseball. 803-404-6100. Is it a welcome home? Do we get to tweet out a welcome home? A lot of my favorite things are coming together in this story. 
We'll we'll a get a lot of my favorite a lot of my favorite recurring themes are coming together. We'll get Preston's take. Jadavian Clowney has got a new team. You're listening to Bill Gunner, Preston Thorne, Jen Jensen. It's the early game.
still looking really nice out on the highways with regards to traffic flow. No accidents. Doesn't appear that we have any disabled vehicles that could be impacting you. So good, good, good on that. 66 will be our high today. Uh, sunny skies for Friday and Saturday in the low to mid 70s. And then by Easter Sunday, we hit 83. So welcoming that um, and really be in the low 80s for a couple days. So we'll kind of enjoy that. But right now it's 55 on the early game. So Clowney with that sack gets him to nine and a half, and that's a, that's a big that number for $750,000 bonus. He hits his uh, plateau. I think he might be happy. <laughs> look at his. He's, he's happy. Look, look at him. Look. Just look at his that, reaction. That, that dance is worth seven fifty. dollars I mean, no, no one knows why he's doing that right now in the stands. But we're though. telling him. <laughs> hey, good for him, though. He, he's he's kind of rebuilt his career in many ways this year. That was earlier well, I say earlier, that was last season. It's it's basically a new season. That was last season, Jadavian Clowney hitting a milestone, uh, honestly, a career year for him with Baltimore. Kind of did it quietly, and now I guess he's coming home. Is this is this welcome home? Welcome back to kind of your area as he is coming to play for the Carolina Panthers for what is being reported to be a two-year, $20 million contract that could be worth up to $24 million. Bill, it's time for our favorite game. Is he a journeyman? Oh, yeah, he's unfortunately a journeyman status. Can we name the teams that Jadavion Clowney has played for? All right, let me not look because I just, I just clicked off. So, obviously, the Texans. Okay. Ding. I've got a Seahawks. Ooh, good one. Ding. Then he went to the Browns. Then he went to, yeah, because he and Miles Garrett with the Browns were supposed to be good. Then he obviously last year with the Ravens. Ding! And number five, the Panthers. Eh. Wait, what? You missed the stop. Oh. Wait. He, Can uh, anybody name a, So far, Bill has named the Texans, the Seahawks, the Ravens, and now the Panthers. Oh, I said the Browns. And the Browns. I said the Browns because, yeah. You still missed one stop, sir. There's another? So far, we have the Texans, the Seahawks, the Ravens, the Browns, and now the Panthers. But in order, in order, it goes Texans, Seahawks, Browns. Then it goes, then I, then I thought it was Ravens. There's another? You've missed one. Oh. 803-404-6100. Can you get, he wasn't a Raider, was he? Was not. I don't think I, I I don't I don't even remember this happening, but it happened. What is it? The Tennessee Titans. You know what? I don't remember that, but for some reason that sounds correct. <laughs> Was it a fever dream? Like, did it happen? Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. According uh, according to Wikipedia, he signed late. And left early. So he signed in September and left in November. Played in eight games. Very, eight games. Very short stint down in Nashville. So our guy Clowney, who's, who's ours? We claim him. He's our states. We created him. Clowney coming to hit. All of that, that's our guy. Clowney, as great as he is, really was starting to wander through the wilderness as far as his NFL career was concerned. And like the, the clip said, got himself back on track with the Ravens. And it was sort of a throwaway Signage. They were like, yeah, okay, we'll sign this guy. He can still maybe rush the passer. He had a great season last year, and he's able to put himself in a position to cash out, cash in, or cash out this year. Is nine sacks a great season? Yeah. You know he's had four of those. Yeah. That, that's a – his career, because there was such hype about him, obviously, 
I don't. He has had a good career. I don't know if you. I don't know if anybody would label a Hall of Fame career, but you're talking about a guy who's got 52 for his career has 52 and a half sacks. But but that season with the Titans, he had zero and only played in eight games. And then obviously his first season in Houston, where he suffered the knee injury and only played in four games, he had zero sacks. Other than that. You look at 2017 and 2018, 2017, nine and a half sacks, which is a career high. 2018, he followed it up with nine. And then he signed the contract with Seattle, and it dropped significantly. It felt like that was a mistake. Didn't have a good year in Seattle. Then kind of had that odd year that nobody remembers now with Tennessee. But then his first year with Cleveland, nine sacks. And then last year, nine and a half sacks. He's had four seasons. Like, if you were to set the barometer of like, okay, that's a good season. That's that's not a bad season. He's had four of those. That's a pretty good career, and I don't know if we give him credit for that. Yeah, I don't. Well, it's hard. It's, it's based on what you're grading on. It's grading on the curve of being the number one pick, the guy who was going to change the game, and so he's always carrying that with him. It was the same with uh, from a few years behind, or not a few, but previous years of that when you had Mario Williams that was drafted as a defense end over Reggie Bush, and I'm showing my age, but. He had a very similar career where he was a very solid player. He was a guy that people wanted on their roster, contributed, made plays. But the idea that he was drafted number one, people kept that with them. Same thing on in reverse with Baker Mayfield, right? Baker Mayfield, drafted number one. You look at his statistics, he's been a solid quarterback. But when you have that number one moniker placed on you, that means that we expect you to be totally – we're not drafting you number one for you to be solid, we're drafting number one so that you can be game changer, franchise leading, anything that you want, any superlative that you want to mention. So it's it's kind of interesting to sort of measure his career based on that. Is it good for an average person? Yes. Is it good for a number one pick? I don't know. I in his def- it, it, for him it's for a player it's good. I also do think for for Jadavian Clowney what he was in college, like the highlights. That there is there was far, there's been far more expected of him, as opposed to the typical number one pick. Like, I I, I don't know what I expect out of Caleb Williams if he is indeed the number one pick. For I know the, what the Bears expect. I, they expect somebody to change the franchise. Correct. You don't draft somebody. Well, number no, one I know what they. I, I get what you're saying about the team, but I'm saying even most of us fans can look at a number one pick and say like. Uh, Okay, I expect a good career, maybe not a great career. And I'll also say this, for a defensive player, I think the expectation becomes higher than for a quarterback, right? From a fan's perspective, not from a team perspective. Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean the expectation is higher? I feel well, for the number one Bryce Young, for example. Mm-hmm. Last year Bryce Young going to the Panthers, I was like that's not going to work. Mm-hmm. I don't it'll be I'll be interested to watch him. Mm-hmm. But that's not it's not going to work. Whereas if they'd have drafted a defensive player, Defense player can go have a good year. You can still go three and th- three and fifteen, and he can be a good player. And you're like, okay, well, he had a good year. I can kind of see it. Like, I don't feel like a defensive player is impacted by a bad coaching staff as much as a quarterback who can be put in a really bad position. That's fair. That's and that's kind of like because like I look at Caleb Williams with the Bears, and I'm like, mm, I, don't know, I don't know about this. And, and you can put anybody in that position. Whereas if let's just again, I'll just use Chase Young as an example. Like, once Chase Young got drafted, I know he was number two behind Burrow. We kind of stopped paying attention because his defensive lineman. He could have had a great time in Washington. I think Chase Young is a great example because Chase Young has essentially been very similar to Clowney in that he's been fine, but he's not Joey or Nick Bosa. Right. He's been okay, but I feel like when you draft a player that high, especially a defensive player, to your point, I need you to come in. I need you to get double digits. Nine is fine. Nine is great. I need you to get that double digit mark. So, yeah, he's been he's been extremely solid. A very good NFL career. Nothing that you would he's obviously still hanging around. And he still will contribute next year for the Panthers. But based on what the expectations was, it's interesting to judge it based on that. Does it also make us feel slightly old? Yeah, that was the other thing. How did did was you gonna try to guess how old he was? I, I wasn't gonna guess. I just I just was looking at, you know, twenty fourteen, one, two, three. I mean I was looking at the number of years. Well, 
We'll talk about that more. Justin Mackey set to join us coming up in a little while. Toby Edwards of the Carolina Cup. Up next, though, we're going to do some chop talk. We're going to get into a little bit of Braves. We'll let you talk about them. 803-404-6100. You're listening to the early game.
think probably with position players, they've been ready for 10 days or more. But I, I think just from past experience, you need it all for the pitchers. I mean, I think it's just when you have shortened spring trainings for pitchers, whether it's injuries, illness, something like that, it takes them a while to get caught up. So, um, you know, it's probably is too long. But I think as from personal experience, you need every bit of it for the pitching side of it. That is Atlanta Braves manager Brian Snitker. Preston Thorne was or is op- uh, is is spring training too long for uh, Major League Baseball. As we get going today in the Atlanta Braves, uh, five consecutive NL East titles. They've had a World Series championship. And, to well, today uh, I was all set for the segment. I was all set for us to be gearing up for opening day for them. They will not play until tomorrow. This is a new segment we're debuting. We're on Thursdays. Normally we'll do it at 7 a.m. We will talk about the Atlanta Braves. We'll hear some highlights. We'll hear from Brian Snitker or other people on the Braves. It's sponsored by Carolina Turf, Grass, and Landscape Supply out in Lexington. They pride themselves on providing the best landscape supply in South Carolina. They've done that for the past 13 years. Whether you are a commercial developer or a homeowner, a residential homeowner, they want to make a beautiful, easy to care for lawn. Give them a phone call today and learn more. 803-446-6525. Again, that's 803-446-6525. That's Carolina Turf Grass and Landscape Supply. You can visit them on the web. LexingtonLandscapeSupply.com is how you do that. So, relating to our earlier conversation, opening day starters is going to be Spencer Strider. We need to see this concept. If the guy goes to the other school, but now he plays on your pro team, how do you Ooh. approach that? How do you approach that? Because he plays on the Braves, but he went to the other school. So, how do you approach this as a fan? Are you not just cheering for your team? Is it let bygones be bygones? Do you still slightly hold something against them? How does this end up working? I I think, you know, I I, very rarely do I ever really want to refer back to a Gamecock Larry-ism. But, Mm -hmm. you know, he says he doesn't care about them after they leave the school, essentially. Okay. That he moves on from them. So I feel like if they've left the school and they're, they're, they're on your professional team, you accept them. You embrace them. Now, college sports are becoming more like professional sports where free agency, once they leave, there's no loyalty anymore. Freddie mm-hmm. Freeman is the the rare guy, right? Like, Braves fans still cherish him, although Matt Olson is making them forget about Freddie Freeman. Yeah, we got we got we replaced those numbers very quickly. We got Freddie Freeman out of here, and I still contend, Freddie, if you wanted to stay, you could have stayed. It was not, there was nobody forcing you to leave, to go to the rest of those $100 million men in Los Angeles. Um, so, yeah, Freddie, I I know we have a soft spot in your heart, in our hearts for you for some reason, but you you very much could have stayed, but Matt Olson is doing just fine. That brings us to the guy who is the player for the Atlanta Braves, Ronald Acuna Jr. And have you ever really sat down and watched the flair that he plays with and the Love way it. he plays? Uh, Brian, uh, Brian Snitker talked about, can he be even better this season? Here is Brian Snitker talking about the Braves star Ronald Acuna Jr. He does. I mean, he's had a really good camp, um, uh, and I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of under the impression that Ronald might be the only guy that's capable of breaking his own records. And and um, you know, and and I think all these young guys. I don't think any of them feel they're they're where they're going. I think they all feel they have something to that they can work on to get better at. And and uh, Ronald's the same thing. I mean, he's constantly trying to get better. I know his defense. He, he puts a lot of pride in that. Um, offensively, I think as he gets going i mean he's still a, he's not an old guy yet he's still a young a young talented player that that um i think he kind of feels like there's more in there last year he hit 337 on the season last year he had uh 41 home runs and 106 rbis he walked 80 times last year he just struck out 84 uh that was the second lowest of his career behind 60 back in 2020 in the in a 46 game season last year 159 games and struck out just 84 times you know again we haven't covered the braves a whole lot here so i'm saying things that people already know 
but he's 26 years of age. He'll be 27 next December. He's a stud. And they have him locked up. Yeah, that's the big thing. They have him locked down for they have him locked up for a long time. So the significant prime of his career will be spent in a Braves uniform. That last year when they were playing the Phillies, which was an electric series throughout the season, obviously ended disappointingly, but they came to a spot. I believe it was the bottom of the eighth. Ronald Acuna was up, men on second and third. He had an opportunity, and he hit the ball in the gap, center field to chase it down, ended up making it. But it was like the moment in baseball, and I thought he was—he almost came up, almost came up huge. But having that guy as the centerpiece of your of your franchise is going to be something worth watching for a long time. Yeah, and that is Chop Talk. We'll do it every Thursday. We'll move it to 7 a.m. starting next week. Thank you to Carolina Turf Grass and Landscape Supply. It is the spring. You want your yard to look great? Contact Carolina Turf Grass and Landscape Supply, 803-446-6525. They are the official sponsor of Chop Talk right here on the early game. We'll come back. We'll go from one type of grass to another. Uh, not that kind of grass. We're going to talk to horses. You're listening to the early game. No accidents reported this time out there on the highways, and we hope that uh, your Thursday morning continues to be a smooth one. 
66 will be our high today. Sunny skies tomorrow, 72 for the high. Sunny on Saturday, 77. And Sunday, very nice for Easter Sunday, 83 will be the high. We'll keep the 80s really into the beginning of the work week. But right now it's a decent start. Certainly not raining, and we welcome that. It's 55 on the early game. Seven AM and it is not a good look outside. It's dark, it's rainy, but it's gonna give way to a beautiful day on Saturday. The temperature is gonna be in the mid seventies. It's gonna be time to go out and tailgate down in Camden for the Carolina Cup. And joining us now to talk about that, our good buddy Toby Edwards. And Mr. Edwards, the last time we spoke with you. We, we kind of cut you off a little bit. We didn't have time to talk a little soccer, and we're going to do that a little <laughs> bit this much, uh, 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 do that this morning. But how, how is, let, let's start with the serious question. How is the weather this week? A lot of rain yesterday, still raining this morning. How is it affecting the track? Yeah, it did rain. It, it, um, it, by Saturday, the track will be in perfect shape, actually. This rain sets it up really nicely for the horses. When I walked in this morning and had a glance at the rain gauge, we got seven eighths of a tenth of an inch um, overnight here in Camden, um, but good draining soil. So I think it's going to be perfect ground for for Saturday. The rain gauge talk. We didn't expect that. Somebody else bringing in the rain gauge talk. <laughs> I can tell you. Uh, yeah. Well, we 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 have uh, <clears throat> specialized instruments that we use to test the race course for both the moisture content and also the compaction, much like they do um, on an NFL pitch, and that those numbers are taken and recorded b um, by the association for the, for the horsemen. He's Toby Edwards. It's the Carolina Cup coming up this weekend as we get ready. It has been running since 1930, one of South Carolina's great traditions. And if you've never been, you need to go down and check it out. And speaking of traditions, you got a, you got a favorite one that occurs down there each and every year that you take time out to just enjoy a little bit? I, I, I always enjoy um, when everybody's packing up and going home. <clears throat> Everybody, I think, you know, as, they, as I look across and see all these families, go, you know, they've had a wonderful day at the races, made new friends, perhaps set some new family traditions themselves, and, and, and you know, they're, they're, they're heading off home. And the stories they're going to tell as they, as they move forward. It's that's obviously uh, and it's going to be a beautiful day for those coming for those that will be coming down there. Give us give them a little bit of a suggestion on how to get down there. Not only how to get there, what time to arrive and kind of what to expect. Yeah, so the first race is until one thirty, but we open the gates at nine o'clock because we're expecting a huge crowd. And there's lots of pre-race activities um, that you can get involved in, uh, like a tailgating contest. Um, which is sponsored by Piggly Wiggly. So um, you can have a lot of fun with that. Or maybe the ladies want to get into the hat contest. Fancy pants for the guys. Um, we have a massive paddock shop vendor area with, with lots of different boutiques and unique type uh, stores for people to shop in. Um, so I, I suggest people do, uh, do head out early so they don't get frustrated in traffic. But there is going to be traffic. That's just... Um, the nature of having a, a large crowd, um, you, you know, in a, at an event this size. 
what would put me in the pole position for winning Mr. Fancy Pants? What 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 are some things that we've seen that have really really been tracking yeah, you, as a championship pants? You, you know, you see those those pants guys where um, what's the uh, what what's the golfer John Daly? Mm-hmm. Oh, think of a John Daly pair of pants. You, we've all seen the. Uh, the outrageous uh, styles that he wears, which are always a lot of fun. Um, so I, I think if you if you uh, if you catalog something like that, you, you you might be in the running to win that one. Well, I'm glad you picked John Daly because I'm shaped like John Daly, so that that is a good <laughs> that's a good model for me to go after. So I appreciate that. Toby Edwards joining us. The Carolina Cup this coming weekend down in Camden. As you heard him say, first race not till 1.30, but you still want to get down there early and start tailgating and uh, getting going. Now, when you say that, when you talk about the, the dress, you, you talk about the fancy pants, is the tie, is the bow tie, is, are these still extremely popular? Like, is this still what, what most guys, I mean, is that, would I say 50% or has is, is it become more of a casual uh, event? You get you get people dressed every which way, but I think guys um, like to imp- you know dress up and impress the girls. You get all the girls are going to be out there in sundresses and sun hats, and, and the guys don't want to get left behind. I think when we see uh, companies like Brackish uh, creating these wonderful bow ties down in the Low Country, that um, you know bow ties are still definitely part of the fashion show. All right. Sounds like sounds like it's going to be a lot of a lot of fun. Eighty eight years of history, tradition, and racing taking place uh, this coming weekend down there in Camden. But now we got to ask you the big question. You you brought it up. We couldn't get to it last time. Uh, the soccer match up here. I will give us your take. Give us your take on it. I think you wanted ours, but we want your professional opinion uh, first. Yeah, you're going to turn the tables. A uh, little bit. Uh, that's what I did. I set you up last time. I was able to get where you were going. Now we're turning the tables on you. All right. Well, I'm I'm going to go with with Pep Guardiola, and and um, I think he, I think he'll bring the winning team to the to the pitch. Do you? I think we asked you this last time. Are you? Do you follow the English Premier League closely? Or are you I, very? I, not 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 closely, um, but I, I do. Uh, on a Sunday, um, I do um, listen to uh, a, a, a BBC broadcast that sort of round, goes around the games as they're playing. But I, I wouldn't be a, a real close follower of it. For those that don't know, by the way, if you're if you're not aware of this, uh, Liverpool, the t- one of the teams coming, is tied for first place with Arsenal in the pre- with the, in the Premier League right now. Uh, Manchester City is in third place, one point behind uh, Manchester United. The other team coming is is actually in sixth place. Uh, will you make an, an effort to come up here and and visit the soccer match? I'm hoping you guys have got free tickets for. Me. <laughs> I See, thought you were inviting me up to your to your suite. We're being we're being set up already. Yeah, we're we're working on that suite. By the way, I'm glad you bring that <laughs> up. It's it's a lot tougher than you would think. Apparently, for us to get uh, a suite around here. Apparently, Preston and I have not reached that level of of fame uh, just yet uh, with them. Toby Edwards joining us, Carolina Cup. Before we let you, before we let you go, just you know, this weekend you mentioned it. Where are y'all at as, as we see here on a Thursday morning with track preparation and getting the grounds ready? Um, we've still got a fair bit to do. Say so yesterday, yesterday set us back with the with the thunderstorms and everything, and obviously safety and whatnot. We can't have guys out there working in that sort of conditions. Um, but I'm comfortable that um, that we'll get it done. I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm, I don't have to pull an all nighter on 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 Friday night, but that remains to be seen. I hope I don't. Um, so you know, we've got the place in looking in great shape. As I say, the race course. Is looking fantastic, and you know we always strive to provide the safest possible surface we can for the equine athletes. And um, you know we're 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 happy with where we are. So um, you know, come 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 early, come and enjoy the day, make some new friends. Um, CarolinaCup.org. You can get your tickets uh, um, online, download them onto your phone. Um, you get scanned at the gate. To make life easy for yourself if you get your ticket ahead of time. Um, I say gates open at nine. So big crowd. Looking forward to seeing you guys out here. I know you'll be uh, you'll be out here. So um, we'll see see you all on Saturday.
Look forward to it. Look forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Again, the weather, it looks like you have drawn up a perfect weather day on Saturday. Congratulations to you for doing that. Know that you dictating the weather took a lot out of you the last few days, but you have done an incredible job, and we do look forward to seeing you on Saturday down at the Carolina Cup. Uh, Mr. Edwards, thank you as always for joining us, and we'll definitely, Kentucky Derby is not far away yeah, either. We need to call back for some insight on we'll, that. We'll get you, yeah, we're going to get your opinion on that as well. I'll, I'll, I'll throw one out there for you, all right? How about in the fourth race, number 10, Agitar? That's my banker bet of the day. Don't shoot me if he doesn't win. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll send Jen after you. Jen is, Jen race, is the enforcer yeah. of the early game. Uh, all right. Fourth race. Tell her to be kind. Fourth <laughs> race, number 10, Agitar. Agitar. We got it. Rid- that? Preston's Preston is writing it down as we speak. We got you, Toby. All right. Good talking to you guys. Great speaking Appreciate with you. Take you. care. Toby Edwards, yeah. the Carolina Cup. Again, it'll be a phenomenal event. It's really, honestly, a great, great sports weekend. Uh, baseball is getting going. South Carolina baseball, the NCAA tournament is taking place, and the Carolina Cup. You definitely want to get down there and check it out. Uh, again, as he mentioned, you can go to uh, Carolina Cup dot org to learn more and to purchase your tickets 803-404-6100 coming up next we're joined in studio by an actual referee by a former south carolina gamecock basketball player justin mackey will sit down with us and hang out he's going to get quizzed by preston thorne we got a lot to get to you're listening to the early game Bill Gunner for Corley Pool Solutions. I know it's raining today. I know you're not necessarily thinking about jumping in the pool today, but you need to be thinking about it. You need to go ahead and line up maintenance for the spring and summer. And at Corley Pool Solutions, they believe in providing the absolute highest quality swimming pool service at the most affordable price to you and your family. It's more affordable to contact Corley Pool Solutions and Tracy Corley than it is for you to try and maintain the pool yourself. So line up maintenance today. A zero three four four five eight one zero nine well that one of their certified pool professional technicians come out whether it's tracy ashley evan or miss laurel they'll make sure the staff is ready to have that pool sparkling and ready to do a cannonball into so call corley pool solutions today and get them lined up i can promise it's raining they're still out there working right now making pools look sparkling beautiful 803-445-8109 that's corley pool solutions
And uh, looking out on the highways this morning, we do have a report of a tie-up. Highway 321 at I-20. Broad River Road around Piney Grove Road. Also a, a report of an accident there. And uh, as far as your forecast is concerned, we are looking for a high today of 66. And uh, no rain in the forecast for today. Clouds will be on the decrease. 72 for the high tomorrow under sunny skies. And sunny on Saturday, high of 77. We should hit maybe 83 for Easter Sunday. But right now it is 55 in the early game. Up and at them, kids. It's a Thursday morning. The NCAA tournament back on later today. Tonight, Clemson and Arizona get things going in the first game. It'll be 7 o'clock tonight when those two teams hook up out in L.A. San Diego State and Connecticut, 739 tonight. That'll be at TD Garden uh, Arena in Boston. So you've got Los Angeles and Boston hosting the regionals tonight. Arizona, 7.5-point favorite, over-under set at 152.5. By the way, the NCAA probably yelling at me right now. I know that's not a prop bet, but trying to take the player props away from uh, gamblers and Preston you've been through that with the NCA where they've made sure that you knew gambling not what you're supposed to do in college yeah every every year opening day every year I, I, I talk about opening day yes I, that was very clear I, I see a, a smile I feel like our guest in studio Justin Mackey former game cut did you ever get that Preston's talked about that where they the NCA comes in before any season and has a would you say a stern lecture for you, Preston? Yes. They just say, hey, kids, don't do this. Justin, does that was that still in place when you were there? Do you get the NCAA show up and say, no betting on yourself to score five and a half points tonight? I was laughing because they do. Because they do. But then also, now being an official, we get an even sterner talk than uh, than the players. <laughs> I mean, it's – it's. Uh, I did a conference in Philadelphia – and literally, uh, the conference is about six to eight hours. Literally, about an hour and a half is strictly on that. What I, what is that? I mean, what did they? I mean, aside you, it, obviously, it's not just a sentence. Hey, don't do that. If you've got it, it seems like a lot for an hour and a half. What what is the what is the message, or how do they kind of bring that across to you? Zero tolerance. Uh, zero tolerance is is pretty much uh, how they start it, and then they. They have a couple people from the NCAA that they come and talk to you, give you a a PowerPoint presentation and and just let you know about the dangers of it, um, the dangers of what position it can put you in uh, legally and obviously losing your career. And then they also uh, just talk to you about how, uh, I guess, bookies, you know, when you're getting off planes, they're going to know you. They're going to know who you are. They're going to know what (laughs) games you're working, and they're going to approach you. So uh, just trying to keep you away from – from from all of that so that you basically they tell you to live in a bubble pretty much just just go straight to your hotel room order your room service make them put it down at the door don't even talk to the the waiter I, i'm with you justin Mackey joining us uh in studio and unfortunately last week when you were on with us preston didn't get to be here and so he didn't get to ask you a couple questions but he was kind of fascinated by your your journey now your try of you have we didn't go enough into last week your your journey now into the refereeing world mm-hmm. so I, I picking off sort of what we talked about last week when you were making the decision that you wanted to stay involved with the game this becomes an option the first question is what made this a ideal or realistic option for you as far as going into the refereeing um, I just really wanted to get back in the ball, man. Uh, I really didn't care how I did it. Um, like I said, I talked to my dad. I talked to Frank. Um, and both of them suggested officiating. 
And I, I'll be honest with you, I was kind of hesitant with it. I was just kind of like... Have you seen the way Frank talks to officials? Frank really isn't that bad with officials. He's, <laughs> really, he's really not. Interesting. Everybody, everybody always asks me that when I was playing, and I tell them, Frank's really not that bad with officials and even officials that I've uh, met since being in it. They'll tell you Frank is very good with them. He he doesn't do too much yelling at them. He Frank knows how to get on their good side. I'll say okay. that. He knows how to okay. get on their good side. But um, between talking to Frank and my dad and me being hesitant with it, I just said I'll give it a try, knowing that uh, most staffs weren't going to have an overhaul due to COVID. Um, I think everybody got that year back except for maybe one coach in all of D1 um, that year. So I just gave it a shot, man. And uh, as soon as I went to one of those college camps, because you pretty much go to camps and you uh, officiate AAU ball and uh, uh, different uh, supervisors from different leagues, they're there, they're watching you. Some officials within those leagues or other leagues are there, they're critiquing you. Um, and that's that's pretty much how you get picked up. It's almost like getting recruited when you're playing. Um, and I went to one of those camps. That was the first time I ever officiated. Um, didn't know what I was doing, didn't have a clue. Obviously, I knew what a foul was, what a travel was, but didn't really know where to stand, didn't know how to rotate, any of that stuff. But um, one of the clinicians is what they call them when they're watching you work. Um, when I came off the court, he asked me how long I had been working. He said, you've been working about three to five years. I said, no, sir, this is my very first game. Um, and he just kind of looked at me, and he was like, just – Hold tight. I'm said I'm talk to you, and uh, you know he he told me he thought I had talent, um, especially for that being my first time ever officiating. You know, obviously there were some things that I needed to fine tune, and uh, but he told me he felt like I would I would be fine in in the business and I would move up fairly quickly, and uh, I've been blessed that that that's been the case. And since that day, I've enjoyed it and I continue to enjoy it. And like I tell people all the time, they ask me about coaches yelling. Coaches and players don't mess with me too much, but at the end of the day, I play for Frank Martin. I'll be fine. <laughs> what is defined for people that are wondering, what is talent in refereeing? Um, I think I think the biggest thing is uh, uh, you got to have feel. You got to have feel for the game. Um, you got to be able to uh, uh, deal with coaches, deal with players. And then at the end of the day, you got to have good judgment. Um, I, obviously, they have set – uh, set in the rule book um, definitions of what what certain calls are and aren't, but at the same time you got to have feel, um, and you got to be able to recognize those calls. You got to be able to recognize sometimes when a player can play through, and it, it's a very complex thing that that most people wouldn't even understand. You don't that. say. So you so you mean <laughs> to tell me that referee in a game where. These supreme athletes are moving at a million miles per hour. You mean to tell me that it's a tough thing to do? Wow, that's amazing. You wouldn't think it was that tough because everybody seems to know what every call is going to be made. Isn't that right, Justin? Well, it's like I tell people all the time. I tell my friends. They ask me. I say, just put this into perspective. Most people don't like somebody looking over their shoulder, one boss looking over their shoulder when they're at work. As an official, you got both coaches. You got all 10 players. You got all bench players and bench personnel. You got all the fans <laughs> critiquing everything you do every time you blow your whistle. Not to mention, those are factors, but non-factors, because you still got to deal with your boss at the end of the day. At the end of the day, you still got to deal with your boss. Right. It, it's a it's a very uh, hard thing to do, and, and I tell people all the time, if you think you can do it, try it. <laughs> try it. Should should or would you prefer for the referees to be able to have a press conference or speak after the game for media to ask you if you have to answer questions after the game because you're right you don't nobody nobody says nobody shows up after the game and, and says man that was a well officiated game there's nobody that comes to you and goes man you did great it's only when man what happened there five minutes ago and you called that foul what do you think like nobody ever ends again we don't Preston and I have never come in here and gotten a phone call or come in here and said wow that was a really well officiated football game that was that was excellent or so so do you in a way do you wish that the that referees would speak after the game just to be able to answer a few questions on maybe what you saw as opposed to just being criticized the next day when you I – would, I would also imagine that you don't listen to a lot of sports talk radio just because, again, we're not coming in here the next day going, whoo, really well officiated. 
Um, that's an interesting question. I haven't been asked that before. Um, because while I want to say yeah, because I think we are under such a microscope, at the same time, I think I'm going to say no, um, just because it would put us under a bigger microscope. Um, I think with with legalized gambling coming in, let's be honest, people are going to blame the players here and there, but for the most part, we're the ones that are going to get the blame. The referees is going to be even deeper for us. Um, so I think by doing press conferences, that puts you in a situation where, I mean, people already see your face. They already know your face. But it puts you even more, I guess, in a sense of celebrity, I guess, in a, in a sense. Um, and I think that's probably something I would more like to stay away from as an official because, like I say, you do a lot of traveling through airports and things like that. And I've been around uh, a few NBA officials. I've been around a few top-level college officials, and people do know them. They do. They do know them. They want pictures with them and things like that. But once you start talking about plays and things that people have no clue about, they don't understand why you called that play with five minutes, even if you explain it, they don't care. Let's be honest. They do not care. They care that they feel like that call cost their team. They care that they feel like that call cost their bet at the end of the day. Yeah, I've been there. 803-404-6100 is how you can weigh in. Yeah, Justin, those people who don't care, <laughs> all of them people. Justin Mackey joining us in studio. We'll talk a little of the NCAA basketball tournament. I'm also interested um, how you prep for a game, and I want to get into that a little bit because you playing for Frank, I felt this way, and I think I would talk about it on radio sometimes. There was a reputation of Frank Martin's teams as physical, tough teams. That was the reputation. And I always felt like officials came in with that mindset, and so you were scrutinized a little more heavily. Like, officials would come and go, hmm, Frank's teams play physical defense. And I'm asking, I wonder that about Lamont's teams and what you've seen as well, how he coaches defense. That's a whole, this is a whole other topic, but how he coaches defense from what you've seen as opposed to how Frank t uh, taught it or coached it. Because this year, that's what we talked about. Lamont's team defensively, how they just kind of suffocated teams. So we'll get into a lot of that with you this morning as we roll along. Justin Mackey joining us here in studio. You listen to Preston Thorne, Bill Gunner, Jen Jensen. It's the early game.
And out on the highways, we'll uh, let you know of just a couple things that are happening. 378 at Pineview Road, an accident there. Also 321 at I-20. Broad River Road at Piney Grove Road, an accident. I-26 eastbound at I-77 right there at exit 116. The left exit ramp is blocked at this time. So the left exit ramp blocked, I-26 eastbound at I-77. And the two right lanes are blocked on I-20 eastbound at Broad River Road. So slow down there. 66 will be our high today. 72 tomorrow, 77 on Saturday and hitting 83 for Sunday. 55, no rain right now on the early game. Seven thirty-five as we roll along. Reminder: A week from tomorrow, we will be, we will be out at Charwood Golf Club for the one hundred seven five The Game Spring Golf Tournament. Four hundred dollars a foursome. You need to go ahead and get registered today. I know as you look outside, you think, "Hmm, not a golfing day." But next week, it will be a lot of fun. Come and join us on April the fifth. Four hundred dollars a foursome. Again, we'll have onion sausage for breakfast. Sponsored by Old Timey Meat Market. We'll have a mimosa bar by Saki's Wine and Spirits. We'll have a great lunch menu by Firehouse Subs. We'll have plenty of giveaways, baseball tickets, Carowinds tickets, concert tickets, craft beer passports. Go ahead. Get registered. Come out next Friday. It'll be the women's final four as well. We'll talk, hopefully, be talking South Carolina basketball next Friday out at Charwood Golf Club. So come on, get registered. Go ahead and do it today. 803-755-2000. for a foursome. Shotgun start 10 a.m. Preston and I and Jen will be out there. Preston will be hitting the... Uh, the opening golf shot, the ceremonial opening golf shot, and hopefully he's been practicing and ready for that. Uh, yeah, like I said, uh, my contribution to the tournament is I'll hit the worst shot early, and then everybody else can continue after that. That is a great way to mm-hmm. do it. We, team player. True team player. So get registered. Call Charwood today to 3 seven five five two thousand. 2000 Justin Mackey joining us in studio how do you watch basketball now? Do you Great watch question. it? Do you watch it like a fan, or are you watching and and you don't notice the actual game? You're watching the officials and small things. Or do you watch it like a player? Yeah, <laughs> it it depends. Um, Wake Forest, I watch strictly as a fan because obviously my dad coaches there. Um, South Carolina, I watch as a fan on TV, but when I'm there, if I know an official that's working, I try to watch them, and then also. Now, since people know I officiate, when I'm at the games, they'll look at me and be like, Justin, good call. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know why, because nine times out of ten, I'm never going against what I'm watching the official do. Right, you're not going to criticize a friend, I, right? Exactly. I know how hard it is. Um, but uh, watching just a game, it just, like I say, just depends. Um, if I know an official who's working, I try to I try to watch them and, and see their their signals see the way that they talk to coaches. Um, if I'm watching and I don't know an official, it's still hard just to say I watch for fun because I play. So I'm watching the decisions that the players make. I'm watching the decisions that the coaches make, the game adjustments, the X's and O's. So very seldom do I watch a game and I'm just like I'm really sitting here having fun, enjoying this, which I do have fun, but it's almost like my mind's always working when I'm watching a game. What is it? So to go back to what I was going to ask you first, the preparation like for an official to call a college game, you worked big South games this year. How much is it? Is there film watching to kind of understand the team? Is it reading about it? What, what is that like? Cause I, I'm going to assume you don't just hop off the plane, show up to the arena, throw on the striped shirt. Go, All right, let's go. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, like you say, it's a lot more that goes into it than people understand. Um, you're watching film. Um, and you're watching film like me. I watch film just like when I play. So uh, first I watch film to see what the two teams or whichever team um, I'm having. 
watch to see what they like to run. Because if you know what the, the offensive strategy and the defensive strategy is of that team, that can help you officiate. Like if I know that uh, number five is a lefty shooter, that'll help me get in better position when he shoots because it's going to be a different positioning for a lefty shooter than a right-handed shooter, right? And then, uh, so like I say, you want to watch film. Um, if you haven't worked with that coach before, you kind of want to uh, find out their temperament from other officials who have worked that team. Um, I like to do a scouting report. I like to do a scouting report on uh, the team's averages because, again, that kind of helps you. That If I know that this team shoots a lot of threes, I know, okay, we're probably going to have a lot of long rebounds that night. If I know that a team doesn't shoot a lot of threes, likely they like to get to their basket a lot. So I know I'm going to have a lot of decisions to make at the basket. Um, a lot of things that goes into it, and I try to just have myself as prepared as I can, just like I did when I was playing. 803-404-6100 if you've got a question for Justin Mackey on officiating. So last week, I think it was Sunday night, I think uh, Houston and Texas A&M play and abundance of fouls. Preston was talking about that. How do you as an official n go into a game, and this kind of goes back to what I was talking about with Frank's teams. Y'all were known, announcers would always say, it's going to be a rock fight. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, other, the other coach would say it. They knew that y'all liked to play physical. How do you not let that creep into your mind that, oh, this upcoming team, how does an official not let that creep in that this team likes to be handsy, likes to be physical, and now you call it either a little tighter or you let them get away with things? Um, I think you have to not anticipate calls. Um, that's what they teach you. Uh, you don't anticipate calls. Like a lot of fans get upset because they'll say, oh, that's a late call. Well, when things happen – as fast as they're happening, you have a lot of things to process. Um, so you got to start the play, you got to let the play develop, and you got to finish the play, and then you got to make a decision. So instead of going in there like, okay, South Carolina, I know they're going to deny, I know they're going to push up on the ball, uh, you, you want to watch for the hands because you don't want to allow them to have an advantage, but at the same time, you don't want to automatically go out there and say, okay, boom, he's got a hand on him, that's foul automatically. If it doesn't disrupt his rhythm, speed, balance, or quickness, I'm not calling it. Um, and that's something else that we're taught, rhythm, speed, balance, and quickness. If it's not disrupted, play on. From what you've seen, now we're going to transition now to what you've seen from South, what you saw from South Carolina this year, how would you compare the way Lamont Paris coaches defense to what you guys did with Frank Martin? And I, and both schematically, but also how he how he teaches it, how what you've – because you've had a chance, to, I know, to attend a few of the practice practices, but how he teaches it and how Frank kind of – taught the message um well obviously their coaching styles are very different um but uh for us we were very in line to the ball um pretty much as soon as you cross half court we were in you um theirs is more of a pack line in tight defense to me um they like to keep their heels at a three-point line a lot of times sometimes they'll extend it but a lot of times they like to keep their heels at a three-point line which i think both Obviously, both defenses work. Mm -hmm. um, we we did well when Frank was here, and we saw what they did this year. Um, in terms of the way he teaches it, I've been to a couple of practices, but the practices I went to were uh, early on. So I more so saw them working on the offensive side of the ball than the defensive side of the ball. But um, just speaking to his, his coaching ability, and I've been fortunate to get to know him a little bit. Um, he, he's an excellent teacher. Uh, I like how patient he is with his guys. I like how he takes his time explaining. I like when they come off the court, he's still talking to them. And sometimes when the guys are all the way on the other end, he's looking at his uh, bench and he's talking to them. Um, so, which are, so Frank did some similar things as well. Um, so uh, I, I like I like Lamar. I like his, his demeanor and I like uh, watching the product that he's putting out there. I was just laughing because when, when obviously you played for Frank and we were obviously both of us are big fans of Frank. How did you extract the love out of the message that was coming at you from from Frank? You know, when when you, you knew maybe it was being said in a tone, in a way, how did you get to like, okay, I I I'm getting the message, not what's not how it's being said, but what's being said. It's very hard. Um I'm not going to lie to you, it's very hard, especially those first two years. It's very hard. Um, but around that junior year, one, you hear. 
got to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> Two, um, um, usually around your junior year, that's when Frank kind of starts to display um, who he is off the court to you um, and give you a lot of that love, which I kind of dealt with somewhat similarly because Coach Whipple, who I played for in high school, was kind of the same way. You're not going to get a whole bunch of love until about that junior <laughs> year. Um, so um, once I started to uh, understand that, that kind of helped me and Frank's relationship move forward. And I think it's it's for anybody who played for Frank will tell you the same thing. You got to kind of navigate it your own way. You got to figure it out in your own way. Every person's different. Everyone responds to that type of coaching different. But once you figure it out, you're fine. We'll keep on Justin Mackey joining us in studio. We've got him for a little bit I longer. A, I here. got a big question on the other side. We'll get to <laughs> Preston's big question. You're listening to Preston Thorne, Bill Gunner, Jen Jensen, and again, Gamecock, Justin Mackey joining us this morning. It's the early game. Bill Gunner for Mid-State Roofing. Another day, more rain. Is your roof ready to handle it? If not, it's time to call Mid-State Roofing. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Mid-State Roofing has got an on-call technician or a sales rep ready to put you in a maintenance contract. And that's exactly what you need, a maintenance contract with Mid-State Roofing. So go ahead, give them a phone call today and line that up because for nearly 30 years, Mid-State Roofing has been the leader in the commercial roofing industry, and they're ready to help you today. Make sure that you have leak detection and leak prevention, because if not, oh boy, could you be in some trouble. Again, contact Mid-State Roofing today and speak with an on-call technician, 803-356-1919. Again, that's 803-356-1919. You can visit them on the web, midstateroofing.com. If you've got a leak, let Mid-State Roofing take a peek.
749 as we roll along here on a Thursday morning, joined in studio by Justin Mackey. Reminder tonight, baseball taking place in Tuscaloosa. We'll have the pregame for you right here at 745, first pitch, 8 o'clock. It is, remember, Tuscaloosa Central Time Zone. So with that in mind, it'll be a 7 o'clock first pitch if you are out in the Central Time Zone. That's why it's an 8 o'clock Eastern Time game. You can tune into 107.5 The Game, 100.3 The Game here uh, in Myrtle Beach as well. Uh, 7.45, and we will have the pregame for you again right here, 107.5 The Game. You've got a big question for Justin. Yeah, it, it came in came in through the Preston Thorne text line oh, from, an, uh, from an anonymous anonymous point guard of your. We want to know how you would have officiated your pops. Oh, <laughs> Uh, um, we have a, we have some scouting reports, and we want to know what, <laughs> what how you would have officiated him. Um, I don't I don't really know. I um I've seen my dad play. I know he was very physical, but I more so paid attention to his offense because like that's when I was a kid. Um, and I was younger, but I do know that if it could be done which it can't because I can't officiate his games, I would give him a technical foul. I would. Just just for one of those punishments back in the day. I do know that. He would definitely so give would, a technical he, foul. You would the quick, the quick T, the quick, well, yeah. As soon as he said something, <laughs> turn around, that's for that punishment when I was 16. <laughs> <laughs> Throw him out. <laughs> yeah, there's obviously there's obviously a conflict of interest here. We got to start teeing him up. <laughs> what has that been like for you growing up? Because I played... I played AAU ball with Alex English Jr. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he went to Hammond, but his dad went to Dreer. You followed your dad's footsteps all the way up. Irmo, South Carolina. There was never there was never that moment for you where you were Justin Mackey. Mm-hmm. You were BJ's son for a long time. And then then you get and you go do something that he never did. That's win an NCAA tournament game and obviously go to the Final Four. And I think that's when you stepped into your own and became your own man. Mm-hmm. But what was what is what was that like for you? I, I assume you enjoyed it. Maybe you didn't. Um, a uh, little bit of both. A little bit of both. As a kid, kid, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, the older I got, and you know, you see people, and you're gonna play basketball like your dad. You're gonna be good as your dad. Da 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 da. And then I always wanted to play for Coach Whipple, so that was a me decision. I always wanted to play for him. So my dad retired from playing overseas when I was uh, 14, headed into my sophomore year, transferred to Irmo, played for Coach Whipple, um, win a state championship right off the bat um, with Jordan Roper. Mm-hmm. Um, and then junior year, we get to the uh, final eight. Senior year, we go undefeated, number one in the state, win, win it again. I win Gatorade Player of the Year, missed the basketball. So now I've done everything that he did in high school. So now I feel good. Um and then you get to college. Um, that's where it really gets tough. Um, um, I, some injuries, different things keep me off the court as much as I would have liked. And, you know, that's where I had to learn to stay off of sports talk. That's where I had to learn to stay off of social media because now you're getting the whole, he's not BJ, he's da 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 And it does. For a little bit, it messes with your self-worth because, um, as you, can, you know, a lot of times as an athlete, when you've been doing something so long, you try not to make it who you are, but it kind of does become who you are. It kind of becomes um, what you kind of find your worth to be. That's why when a lot of people say, oh, these athletes, mental health, they're making this much money, they're da 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 Man, you don't understand. This is who they've been their whole life, and now it's not going right. It messes with you, and it messed with me for a long time. But um, luckily, to his credit, being the dad that he is, um, Perry Clark, that was a coach when I was at USC, he had – his favorite story uh, was it was after the tournament we played down in College of Charleston mm-hmm. uh, sophomore year, um, and I didn't play at all. I didn't play a single game, I don't think, um, towards the beginning. And um, my dad, after the game, the final game, because uh, he was still at Charleston Southern at that time, he gave me a hug. He said, man, I'm proud of you. I don't, I don't care about none of that. I'm proud of you, the way you're handling this situation, da, da, da. And I guess PC overheard it. And he talks about that story all the time. So... One thing I'll say is my dad was, he was understanding of the pressures that I had. He was understanding of what I was going through at my time at USC. And he was always encouraging, always talking to me. And he's never, he never pressured me to play basketball. He never put his love for me 
on or through basketball, and uh, he, he'll always have my love and respect for that because he easily could have. I'll get back into some of that with you, but I, I do need – did Perry Clark ever try to sell you a vacuum? Because every time I looked at Perry Clark on sitting on the bench – I was reminded of a door-to-door vacuum sales guy who came down after a, came home after a long day of work and just was exhausted from going door to door. Like I, every time I'd look over at the bench and he's just sitting over there, he'd have that brown suit on. I was just like, yeah, he's been out selling vacuums all day and just showed up the arena. <laughs> PC's been a long time in the game, man. <laughs> yeah. He deserved to be tired, man. He deserved to wear whatever suit he wanted to. A long time in the game. <laughs> That's all I could ever envision when I look over at Perry Clark. I was like, oh, he's. It was a long day selling those vacuums door to door, just those heavy ones too that you got to carry around. Justin Mackey in studio with us. We'll continue on with him, get into a little more officiating. A couple questions for him coming in, and we'll do that. I'm sure Preston's got more questions. Uh, oh, yes. Well, we'll uh, we'll get into that. You're listening to Preston Thorne, Bill Gunner, Jen Jensen again joined in studio this morning by Gamecock Justin Mackey. It's the early game.
And taking a look at your traffic conditions out there this morning, certainly not experiencing what we did yesterday. We welcome that. But there are some accidents out there. I-26 eastbound there at uh, Charleston Highway. The left lane is blocked. I-20 eastbound at Bush River Road, an accident there. Also, I-20 eastbound at Monticello Road. Eight AM as we get you up and get you going here on the early game. You enjoying it? You've done. We talked about this. Um, we we talked a lot about it. Yeah, yesterday, Tuesday, with Beachy Johnson talking and and going on Instagram uh, to talk about his transfer. We talked about it with Lenora Sellers and how he handled himself. We talked about Shador Sanders, who apparently came from nothing. Uh, barely survived life. Now star quarterback for Colorado. Been a rough life for Shador. But this is you. You, you you're accustomed to being in the spotlight and having to deal with media, and, and not that we're media anymore. But uh, you're you're okay with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm having a good time. I'm enjoying it. Uh, <laughs> I think you remember when I was playing. I used to enjoy talking to the media. So I I covered you. I I was gonna and I thought about that. I never wanted to pressure you when you were a recruit about where you were going. And I go back to that question I asked you about going to Irmo, playing for South Carolina. I remember you and I having a conversation uh, right around. It was either it was the day of or the day after you got the Memphis offer. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember. I can't remember who the coach was there. I think it was the guy who went. Passner. To, okay. Yeah. Uh, and we talked about that. And I didn't want to, I didn't really in that interview with you, I wanted to be more professional than, than two guys talking. But I remember a little bit of our discussion about that, about that opportunity to go play at a school like Memphis first, trying to follow in your father's footsteps at South Carolina. And yeah, you were always honest and open and it was fun. Uh, and trust me, that that's not the way it was for a lot of people. Um, <laughs> trying to get PJ to talk was, <laughs> it was difficult. Uh, Sendarius would, would, would talk to anybody and everybody that walked by. Um, uh, <laughs> loved Sendarius, loved his uncle. Um, what was that team like? Now, as you think about it, you think back to the relationships that you have college basketball has evolved and changed so much with the transfer portal. Uh, but you think about that group, Dwayne and, and PJ, uh, now you and PJ, and Sanders, you were in-state kids. Mm -hmm. Y'all were y'all represented the Palmetto State, and you've seen what's happened with other in-state kids. And 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 uh, just go back and think about that team and the personalities, <laughs> all the way around. <laughs> well, that's exactly what that team was full of personality. Um, all of us, we like to have a good time. We like to hang out. But more than any of the other years that I was there, that team was willing to put in the work. Which obviously that was the best team during Frank's tenure. Um, we were willing to put in the work, um, and we really enjoyed each other. We enjoyed hanging out. It'd be anything just to walk into me and Dwayne's room and see four teammates in there or walk into PJ's room and see a bunch of teammates in there or Sin's room. We were always together, um, and we were always hanging out, uh, and, and we, were, we, we would even go to the gym and put in the work together, whether it be the morning crew because some guys went in the morning, some guys went after class. Some guys went after study hall, but regardless, we were always putting in the work. And then I can say it now, then after putting in the work, we go to five points and we party a little hard. Put in, put in more work. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, um, nah, it was a lot of fun uh, being around those guys, and we still got our uh, Final Four uh, Snapchat. Sometimes we put in videos. Sometimes we talk. Sometimes we put in pictures from, from uh, that year. I mean, it's, it's good memories to look back on. All right, so that this leads me to this leads me down the path. And you said two things that I I, I consistently say is that 
you never know what a team's going to be from year to year. And so when you talk about the time you were there, you said this that specific team got along so well. It, I, it's just I don't know how it works because I had a very similar situation when I was in school. Second thing, I know great teams are always – they just like being around each other because the season's so long and so so hard. You have to be able to do it with people that you get along with. And you've been in basketball long enough to know that that's not always the case. Yeah. Like, you can always have a team and like, ah, these dudes are on my team, but we're in – whatever. Now, to the group Snapchat. Okay. Who is the most frequent snapper? I don't know what the word is. Who's the most freaking poster in the group Snapchat out of that out of your group? Probably to Marcus Blanton. Okay. Really? Probably to Interesting. Blanton. Interesting. Probably to Blanton. Okay. Who is the person in the group Snapchat who is most likely to take a conversation left and to do something that's totally off topic or not <laughs> what we were talking about? Probably Chris Silva. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Very good. Very good. Who is the person to respond last and least to the group Snapchat? Probably me. Yeah. <laughs> good. Because okay. I don't keep the Snapchat at, on my phone. So usually when I, I, I'm i like, oh, let me go see if they put something. It was like three days ago. <laughs> Interesting also the generational difference between having a group Snapchat. I, I and was a, wondering, like, are we? And a group chat. So you don't have a group chat. It's a group Snapchat. Yeah, it's a group Snapchat because I just think. We tried the group chat for a while, but just too many moving pieces, man. Mm -hmm. You got some guys playing ball overseas. You got some guys. Basically, everybody's just in a different time zone. Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody's in a different time zone. So it's easier to just let do the Snapchat, let people see it when they see it, comment on whatever the video or the picture is, because that's usually how it starts. Somebody will just drop a video, remember this night, or <laughs> look at this dude, or whatever the case may be, and then a conversation will kind of spur from there. How on fire was the group Snapchat during this past basketball season? Not much, not much, just because, uh, like I say, everybody's kind of busy. I mean, you think about that, and it's crazy to say, but, man, that was seven years ago. Most of us are full-grown men. Some of us have kids. Some yeah. of us some of have wives. I mean, we, we're full-grown men now, so it's kind of hard to keep up that stuff on a daily basis like we used to, but uh, we still try and talk from time to time. Yeah, it, it's it is that was a group. You think about it. What Dwayne has gone on to do with podcasting, mm -hmm. what you've gone on to do, Sandarius and Chris have have gone on. PJ's gone on to careers. Um, I'm trying to think of who else y'all had. Obviously, on that team, that, that was an interesting group of of players. A That's lot of personality. For, <laughs> a lot of personality. And and it took that group to be able to handle Frank. Right. That, yeah. You had to have that kind of group where if somebody got on you a little bit, or if he got on you. Somebody could put their arm around you and go, it's Frank. Ignore it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm laughing because it, it was a lot of that. Um, it was a lot of that, but or vice versa, that was also the first group that Frank kind of let lead. Frank, during my other years at USC, was the leader. And obviously, he's a coach, so he was still the leader. But, you know, that year, Frank entrusted us enough, enough to get on each other. You know, there might be times where somebody's – having a bad practice, and instead of us letting Frank get on them because now it kind of kills the mood of practice, we'll get on them and be like, Coach, Frank, we got it, we got it. And Frank would trust us to have it. He would, and that would allow his practices to go smoother. Sometimes he'd let us do it in games. That would allow games to go smoother. Um, and he would always say, if you guys lead, it's easier than if I have to lead because if I have to lead, nobody's going to like it. He used to say that my first three years. And we didn't realize what he was saying. And then that fourth year, when he would let us lead, I finally understood what he was talking about. If you've got a question for Justin, you want to weigh in 803-404-6100, which we roll along. So I was telling a story off air um, about Jamie Lucky one time, telling a story about Mike Krzyzewski back a long time ago when I used to coach at Lexington. We would go to Presbyterian basketball camp, and, and he would tell these great stories. Who is who is maybe the person who has surprised you going through that that maybe was more fake than you realized? Because I was telling a story about Shashevsky on camera being exceptionally nice after one game to Jamie Lucky, and as soon as the camera turned around, uh, his Joe Pesci side came out, and and a lot of colorful language occurred. Uh, but who have you noticed? Because and, and maybe maybe how many times have you had that? Maybe not calling out somebody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How how I, many times have you noticed that? Um. I really haven't. 
uh, I'm sorry I don't have anything juicy for you, but I, I don't catch a lot of problems from coaches. I really don't. Um, I think it helps because one of the biggest things about officiating is perception. I think it helps that it I still have pretty much the same build and frame that I did when I played. Um, so it looks like I belong out there. Um, I have some coaches have complimented me after games and say, you know, the way you call is I, I can tell you played if they don't know that I played, you know, which is, to me is a compliment because that means, you know, I, I call with good judgment in my opinion. So I haven't really ran into much uh, issues with uh, with with coaches. How long have you refed? Three? Um, two three. years college, three years total. All right, let's go back. Because one thing about you, how do you move up in this profession? Right now you're at the Big South. I, I know you mentioned off air you've got some camps coming up. Mm -hmm. How does one move up in a pro in this profession? If you've got somebody younger that's listening this morning, how do you, you how you got into it and how you work your way? Because one thing that I guess I was going for that I didn't think about, you're still new in this profession. You haven't gotten to ACC mm -hmm. or SEC yet where – you all of a sudden have that coach where the ESPN cameras are on you yeah. and the coach is complimenting you, but the camera turns away <laughs> and now the coach is really telling you what they thought that night. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's just like uh, as a player, you get recruited. Um, uh, I know you were talking about uh, Jamie at PC camp earlier. Um, he does, he has a camp that he does and he, his camp he does for uh, up and coming officials. That was a camp that I went to. Uh, over the past uh, two seasons, over the past two off seasons, and got seen um, by by some of the people in the business. Uh, you got supervisors of of different leagues, and they'll come out to these camps, and and pretty much the camps you're uh, officiating uh, high level AAU basketball, so some of the top players in the country, and they'll see the way you officiate because at the end of day, college is high level ball. These guys are going to be playing college, and if they like the way you officiate, you know they'll give you a call. And if if they like you, they add you to their to their uh, league. Has a blown call kept you up at night? Yes, really. Yes. Do you? Yes. What, can you explain the scenario? Um, um, I can't. Okay. I can't go too much in detail, but yes. And I'll tell you right after the call. I called my dad. I sent him the video. I said, "All right, as a coach, what'd you think?" He told me what he thought. Um, <laughs> did you Did you blow it? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. I called my supervisor after, and I asked him what he thought. He told me what he thought. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, he also told me, Justin, don't don't let it kill you. I know it's going to keep you up, but don't let it kill you because it's players don't make every shot. Coaches don't draw every play up at the right time or use their timeout at the right time, and referees are not going to get it. Well, it was going to – I get where you're going without going into too much detail. How bad of a blown call was it? Because it, it's simple to say, all right, I missed a hand check mm -hmm. or a, a guy was shooting a three-pointer with 15 minutes to go in the second quarter and the second half and and got fouled and you missed it. How That particular one that bothered you, mm -hmm. because now you take us into the mind of a referee, how bad was it? Was it, I don't know, I don't want to say game-defining, but... It was. It, it was game-defining. Um, so... I called the foul, which it could have been called a foul possibly, but the ball goes out of bounds. So instead of calling the foul in that situation and deciding the game, because now we walk to the other end and we're shooting two free throws on, on a rebound that goes out of bounds, and it's going to be that team's ball anyways, now you give them two free throws, they make two free throws with, I think it was like .7 seconds left. You pretty much have, or no, it was like 1.2 left or something yeah. like that. Um, I had pretty much awarded them the game. Uh, I, I did. I pretty much awarded them the game. And, and, and to be clear, you w you were not doing that on purpose. No, no, I was, you not, was not doing, I was that, not doing that intentionally. That on purpose. It it wasn't your goal when you yeah. when you woke up that morning. You <laughs> didn't say, you know what I'm gonna do today? I'm gonna blow a call here. Yeah, that no. wasn't what you did that day, right? No, that, and think, previous to that whole game, I'm sure you had called a good game up until that point. Yeah, I think so. Of course. And I felt that way when I went. I, back I just want to be clear because I think people think like referees just wake up and like, you know what I'm gonna do today? I, I've got. I'm gonna miss this call. Hey, 803-404-6100. We'll we'll wrap it up with Justin Mackey. A lot of informative discussion definitely definitely not the last time you're going to be in here with us it's, it's been a lot of fun this morning do, do want to get your thoughts on basketball tonight as well and this weekend you're listening to bill gunner preston thorne justin mackey joining us in studio it's the early game
Preston here. Let me tell you about my friends at Absolute Glass, the premier glass company of the Midlands, offering auto, home, and business glass repair. So if your glass is damaged, shattered, cracked, or broken, they can handle the job. If it's a cracked windshield, that's no problem. They'll come out to your location and replace it for you, usually for free, and they'll work directly with the insurance company to take you, take away the headache. They will come out to wherever you are. School, work, it doesn't matter. They will come to you. Now, if you're at home and you're looking to increase the value of your home with new windows or mirrors, Absolute Glass will come out and take care of all of that for you. Windows, mirrors, shower enclosures. I say all the time, if you can see through it, Ray and Mariana at Absolute Glass can do it. So check them out online at AbsoluteGlassInc.com. That's online at AbsoluteGlassInc.com. It is a better morning than it was yesterday as far as traffic conditions, but we do have some incidences to let you know about. Berry Hill Road at Fairway Lane, Blythewood Road at Wilson Boulevard, I-20 eastbound at exits uh, 68 and 63 accidents in both locations, I-26 eastbound, uh, there's an accident at exit 106, also an exit at 115, that's on I-26 eastbound. Old Cherokee at Old Chapin Road, a tie up there in Lexington. Broad River Road at Piney Grove and Pineview Road at Hallbrook Drive. As far as your forecast is concerned, we're looking for a high today of 66 as the clouds are on the decrease. And tomorrow, 72, 77 for Saturday, 57 right now.
Let's give you a chance to win some baseball tickets real quick. Again, reminder tonight, South Carolina and Alabama, 745 pregame taking place. But we've got two pairs of tickets to next Wednesday's baseball game versus Georgia Southern. Wednesday, April the 3rd, 7 o'clock. We'll take callers 3 and 4. Callers 3 and 4 right now. 803-404-6100 is how you can win those tickets. 803-404-6100. Again, two pairs of tickets to next Wednesday's South Carolina-Georgia Southern baseball game at Founders Park. 803-404-6100 is how you can do that. So, NCAA tournament back on tonight. What was your thoughts from opening weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Um, good basketball. Uh, good basketball was played, as as it always is in March. You had a couple of upsets. You had a couple of the big dogs dominate. Um, I think the biggest surprise for everybody was probably Kentucky. Um, uh, I don't think, you know, many people had that happening, especially I think Cal has now only won one uh, NCAA tournament game in the last five years. Four years, I think. Four yeah. years. But like I told somebody, they're like, "Then they'll fire him." No, the buyout's like thirty-three million dollars. No, they they I didn't think they would fire him. But overall, um, good basketball was played. I thought uh, the officiating was pretty good, um, and I I enjoyed just kind of being off and just being able to watch. Got some questions for you here, so let's kind of go through these. Uh, Texter weighs in and says, "Justin, would you rather call a tight game or a game where you let the players play?" Um, I don't have a preference. Um, it's all about doing the job. It's about how the players are playing. If the players are have having illegal contact, then you got to get it. If the players are playing it clean, then you let them play. Papa Joe weighs in. He says, can you ask Justin, how hard was it to win four NCAA tournament games? Pretty much the best team ever and how sweet it was to beat Duke. Um, it's extremely hard. Um, the margin for uh, error in the NCAA tournament, as we are seeing, as we saw this past weekend, is extremely small. Um, beating Duke was great. Let's be honest. Who who doesn't grow up, especially the era that I grew up in, seeing the Christian Laitler versus Kentucky heave, uh, seeing Coach K, knowing about the Duke team. So, um, and then you know, watching Coach K walk onto the floor, all of us kind of stopped in the layup line. It was like, oh, it's Coach K. So it was nice to beat him. Nice to beat him. Was there ever a coach, as a player, when you were a player, as you're playing, was there ever a coach and you're like, man, that guy is giving it to the official? Like you mentioned Frank. Frank was Frank was a laid-back, or I shouldn't say laid-back guy, but he didn't mess with the officials maybe as much as people thought. But as you're playing, was there ever a game where you were like, my goodness, that guy is <laughs> riding the official? Cal and Bruce Pearl. Really? Yeah. Cal and Bruce Pearl. Because Cal got thrown out. Yeah. Our, our my freshman too. Year. He got early. thrown out my freshman year. Yeah. Early. It yeah. was very early in the game. Yeah, I forgot out. about that. Yeah. 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 Cal and Bruce Pearl, they – I don't know if Bruce Pearl always gives it to officials, but I remember uh, I remember when I was playing, I'd be like, he going crazy over there. <laughs> 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 yeah. Jerry Meyer, the pitching coach, has got a great story about fans down at LSU one time. It's something similar uh, to that. Uh, let's go back to South Carolina for a second. Obviously, I talked to you last Thursday. Game doesn't go quite as South Carolina. What was your observations of – that game in particular well one um uh i gotta give him a shout out because he came the year after i left and i was a grad assistant when his freshman year uh jermaine kuznar just played incredible i mean 40 points <laughs> he played incredible basketball and then um i i thought that oregon would kind of give us a little bit of a problem because they kind of reminded me a little bit of auburn yeah. oregon's oregon's team reminds me a little bit of auburn um, so I figured we'd have a little trouble. Um, I, th I was hoping that we could pull it out, but in the day we didn't. And uh, like I told a fan the other day, in the day, because it's a great season. It's a great season. Uh, you, I think, tie the school record for most wins, and you were projected to finish last in the SEC. You finished, what, third, second or third? Fifth, um, fifth is where they officially fifth, ended officially up. But yeah, yeah. But um, so, I mean, regardless, you were picked to finish last. So, um, in my opinion, and probably some bias here, but I think uh, Coach Parrish should be National Coach of the Year. Um, like I say, school record, pick to finish last, you finish fifth, you make the tournament in your second year. Uh, I think he should be National Coach of the Year personally. How do you compare what you've seen his coaching? So you've you've played you've played for greats mm -hmm. uh, uh, in Tim Whipple and and Frank Martin. 
uh, and and you've had the chance to to observe Coach Paris. How is he different from those guys? Um, he actually reminds me a lot of Coach Whipple. His uh, really in terms of his demeanor, in terms of just constantly teaching, in terms of he will get on you when he has to, but he also pat you on the backside when he has to. Um, very different from Frank. Frank was a tough love guy. Um, that's what he was going to give you. That's what you were going to get. But at the end of the day, uh, uh, a teddy bear off the court. Um, so you knew that he loved you uh, off of that and a guy that uh, he was always going to have you back uh, when you needed him. So, um, beer, like I say, very similar to Coach Whip, uh, Coach Whipple. Um, and uh, like I said earlier, I enjoy, I enjoy watching him coach. I enjoy watching him teach when I go to practices. As a former player, as an alumni, what has been your impression of Kerry Rich and 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 Lamont, and really the the uh, maybe the university, but the, them bringing former players back around the pro? I know everybody always wants to hear that, and and it it people always want former players like yourself, a guy who obviously has, I, I still contend maybe the greatest accomplishment. I, I know South Carolina's won baseball championships. I, I know I know that the football team won the SEC East. Justin, you grew up much like I did. You've watched a lot of South Carolina basketball. Mm-hmm. Getting to the Final Four, I still think maybe one is, is maybe the greatest accomplishment I've ever seen South Carolina athletics ever have. Because I, I'd seen South Carolina play for national championships in baseball. I'd seen good football seasons. Mm-hmm. The Final Four is unlike anything I'd ever seen. I, I can't, I can't accept it. I can't accept. I appreciate it, but I can't accept it. Because at the end of the day, being a runner-up doesn't beat being a national champion. Um, and at the end of the day, baseball has those nat- national championships. Don has her national championships, hopefully another one on the way. So uh, I-, I can't accept that, but I do appreciate it. And, and uh, it-, it-, it was a heck of a run. It was. Um, but in terms of uh, what they're doing, um, I figured adding uh, Kerry would-, would add that dynamic because Kerry has a – He's a relationship builder. Um, he he has a lot of relationships with a lot of former guys over a, multi, a multitude of eras, but especially that 90s and early 2000s era. Um, so it, it feels nice to go back and and see guys, like I was telling Trey Kelly at the, I forget which game we were at, but uh, both of us were there. And it was my first time actually meeting him. Um, you know, I had met Dev, I had met Brandon Wallace, Carlos Powell, but I would never met Trey Kelly and I was just telling him how much I appreciated uh, watching him play when I grew up. Um, being able to have that opportunity was nice. And I think what uh, Coach Paris is building, I think having Kerry on that team and with the relationships he has, I think that's going to continue to bring guys back, and it's beautiful to see. Well, we're going to bring you back. We're going to make sure you you become a part of this. Glad to have you in this morning. I appreciate it. Justin Mackey, uh, for a lot of fun talking with him. Coming up next, Josh Harris, Darlington Raceway president, will join us. Again, this isn't going to be Justin's only appearance. No, we got you locked in. We no, got, him, got him locked in. You're listening to Preston Thorne, Bill Gunner. She's Jen Jensen. It's the early game.
few accidents have cleared, but still have a few remaining. Berry Hill Road at Fairway Lane, Blythewood Road at Wilson Boulevard, I-26, or I'm sorry, I-20 eastbound at Bush River Road and Monticello Road. So exits 63 and 68 on I-20 eastbound both have incidences. I-26 eastbound at St. Andrews Road, a tie-up, and in Lexington, Old Cherokee at Old Chapin, an accident there as well. And the precipitation out of the way, clouds should be on the decrease. 66 for the high today, 72 tomorrow, 77 on Saturday. And we usher in Easter potentially with a high of 83. It's 57 and overcast right now on the early game. Busy, busy morning as we roll along here. Thank you again to Justin Mackey for joining us there for the last hour and a half. A lot of fun talking to him. Definitely will get him back in as uh, he provides a lot of insight. Let's go to another guy who provides a lot of insight. Josh Harris, Darlington Raceway president. And uh, uh, about a little at six weeks, I think, seven, six weeks until we head on down to Darlington and we get it fired up and uh, I, I haven't gotten my inv invitation yet, uh, Mr. Harris, but I believe uh, rumors are swirling that I'm the one that gets to yell, driver, start your engines. Boy, you, you, no. you take one victory, and <laughs> man, you're now, you're now given the command. Wow. I know. I, it, honestly, do you know how many times that we've had trade going, that we've had to have the doors in here fixed because the ego keeps getting bigger and his head just does not fit through the door anymore? It's insane. <laughs> well, you know, for throwback weekend, we typically have some, you know, some of our legends of the sport that will be here in these dignitary positions. But I guess since you're probably a legend in your own mind, we, we might have to throw out consideration there. <laughs> I, yeah. I, at least we're thinking about it. That's all I ask sometimes. <laughs> I'm glad to do it. Thoughts thoughts on last week's race there. Uh, pretty clean race, uh, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a clean race. It You know, there wasn't. The, other than the stage cautions, you didn't have any any other cautions. But I think that's something we've we've come to see the last couple of years at the road courses. With you know, I think part of it is NASCAR looking at how they can avoid a full course caution uh, in situations where on an oval track you might have to throw a caution, but at a long road course you may not have to there were certainly some guys spinning out at different times throughout that race but never to the point that it needed to bring out a full course uh, and then you had some good racing throughout um, you know the the race there it's uh, you know a lot of talk about the track limits there through the S's trying mm -hmm. to keep guys from just drawing a straight line through that part of the course and I think Saturday Friday and Saturday's races had a lot of penalties in there and the cup series it it hit a couple of, of bigger names uh, you know one being Chase Elliott yeah. but and that was it, my pick uh, so I was it, frustrated but he yeah was, yeah he was so it, there was a yeah. Yeah, it was a little bit of a uh, little bit of everything in that race, not too much of of any one, you know, it wasn't crash fest, we didn't get uh the the photo finish like we got at Atlanta, but overall a really solid race. 6 races in. Uh what is your kind of takeaway right now Martin Truex Jr. leading the uh the points uh, the point standings, Ty Gibbs second, Ryan Blaney third, Hamlin fourth and Kyle Larson fifth. Uh what's your early season takeaway from what you're seeing? Well, I think you have to look at Toyota and Chevrolet, mm -hmm. you know, being there at the top of the, the list. It's interesting that, you know, you've got, uh, you know, Truex leading the points without a win, but uh -huh. some of these other guys, you know, uh, William was our first, you know, double winner of the year. Uh, you, I don't think we count Denny's win out at the Clash since it was an exhibition, but those those two manufacturers have been strong, and really, if you narrow it down even more, it's Hendrick and Joe Gibbs Racing that are definitely – have their um, – they're on their game here at the start of the season. So I'm curious to see as we go to a couple short tracks where Fords ran better last year, if, if they start to come on a little bit or if it's going to continue to be, you know, the Toyota and Chevy show. 
Yeah, it's um, two. I, I saw a stat where two thirds of the laps led this season so far combined. JGR and Hendrick are the ones who have met, led most of the laps in um, in the season so far. So it is interesting just how much stronger they are right now than some of the other teams. And like you said, then that's your Chevys and your Toyota. So I'm kind of curious where that Mustang dark course is going to be coming in and are they going to get that dialed in here at some point during the season? Well, I, I don't think you can, <clears throat> you know, discount them altogether. I th- mm-hmm. it, it sounds like, or at least it looks like so far, that Toyota maybe had a little bit more of an edge with their new body style than than Ford has come out with right out of the gate. But I think we're heading, like I said, to some tracks where they had some some success last year. You know, Chris Buescher won at Richmond, um, and Ryan Blaney won at Martinsville in the last race uh, before the finale last year. So I think we'll see here in the next few weeks what, what those guys look like. You know, Blaney's still – you know, right there in the top five in points, having a good solid year, but just the Ford hasn't been able to break into the win column yet. Looking ahead to Richmond this weekend, it is, of, of all things you guys were talking about, the Toyotas and how they've done it is the Toyota Owners 400 this week. Corley Pool Solutions, checker to flag challenge. We'll make some picks here in a second. But you, you look at this race, and the guy who's dominated there has been Kyle Busch, who uh, I think is going for, I think he's going for his, uh, his seventh victory there in Richmond. Thoughts on what to expect this weekend? Well, I, you know, obviously we have our picks coming up, so I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I think you look at from 2022 and 2023, you, you almost need to look at that a little more closely with this new car compared to the previous generation car where a guy like Kyle had a lot of success, a guy like Martin Truex had a lot of success. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious to see you know what we're gonna what we're gonna see on the track on Sunday. I think they're gonna have beautiful weather. They had a little bit of rain earlier in the week, but track should be good to go. And uh, I'm I'm intrigued to see. You know, the other thing that that's intriguing is they've got the same tire mm-hmm. that they had um, out at uh, Bristol. So curious to see if the tire wear is is similar to what we saw out at Bristol, or if it's any different. Um, I think the ideal situation would be you get the tire wear without it beating up like we saw at Bristol. So it, it creates that fall off that the drivers have been looking for. So that's, that's part of the part of what I'm looking for on Sunday. Easter Thanks. Sunday, we'll have the race. And before we get to our picks, we do need to know your favorite Easter candy. Now, yesterday we, we were basically, we narrowed it down to peeps to the Reese's uh, uh, peanut butter egg or the Cadbury eggs. Which direction do you go? You know, uh, probably not going to win many popularity contests with this one, but I'm not really big on Easter candy. I just, I just give me some good chocolate. You know, if you want to put a dark chocolate piece of candy and wrap it in a in a shape of an egg, that would do well <laughs> for me. My kids love the Peeps though, so I'd probably have to go with Peeps just for them. <laughs> okay. NASCAR Chasm did Thank there. You. I did a Peeps uh, thing that he they're going to show before the race on Sunday, so that should be pretty fun to to follow him on Twitter. Okay, they've got that. All right, it's the. Corley Pool Solutions Checkered Flag Challenge. I have taken the lead, uh, but after last year's experience of having the lead and and during the summer and losing it, I I am not trying to brag too much. It's only six races in, race number seven. Uh, Josh and Jen are both tied with 16 points. Reggie and Preston are tied with 21 points, and I'm a point ahead with 22. So let's make some picks. You're up first, Mr. Harris. What direction this week? Still up first, uh, trying to climb out of the basement. We'll get there. Uh, I'm going to go with Martin Truex Jr. I think Toyotas have done really well. He's leading the points. He's been around the top uh, every race this year. He's got success. Uh, He's led some laps in the next-gen car at at Richmond. So I'm going to go with uh, Martin Truex. Jennifer, what direction? You know, um, I've been keeping an eye on Ty Gibbs, and I know a lot of people have as well, and I – there's talk that, you know, this is his year for at least one win. So I think that's the direction I'm going to go is Ty Gibbs. And the only good, good pick. Good pick. And I, uh, Preston's face seems to indicate Aww. that was his pick. It's okay. I'm it's, so sorry. It's all right. It's all right. Um, it's my turn, sir. It's yeah. your turn. Uh, we're going to go with Tyler Reddick. We're going to go with Tyler. We're going to stay Toyotas. We're going to go with Tyler Reddick. All right. Does, okay. Do we have a Reggie Anderson pick? We do. He is um, first up for him is Christopher Bell. 
Well, that was actually my pick. Okay. Then that makes me even more happy. You know what? When my pick gets taken, go with the guy who gets the job done. Give me my guy, Denny Hamlin. Sounds Just like a plan. Go, go with that. Christopher Bell's a good pick. I think I like the Ty Gibbs pick as well. Martin Truex Jr. Yeah, we'll see about that one, uh, Mr. Harris. We I always wanna. appreciate it and hope you have a, a great, uh, great Easter. All right. Thank you, guys. And uh, if anybody's looking for something to do on Saturday, come out for track laps 11 to 2 oh. at Darlington Raceway, $25. Definitely, definitely. We'll mention that coming up. Take care. Have a great weekend. Mm, I do. Bill Gunner for Mid-State Roofing. I tell you what, you want to make sure that your roof is ready for those sun summer thunderstorms. You know how they are. Heavy rains, and if you don't have leak detection already, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. Call Mid-State Roofing today. For nearly 30 years, they've been the proven leader in the roofing and waterproofing industry, and they're ready to help you right now with a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week call center. They can get you in a maintenance contract to make sure that roof is ready ready for this coming summer when some of those thunderstorms roll around. So call today, 803-356-1919. Again, that's 803-356-1919. If you're listening in Florence, if you're listening in Myrtle Beach, or you're listening somewhere else on your 107.5 The Game app, it doesn't matter. Mid-State Roofing will take care of you where you are at. So call today and, again, get a maintenance contract lined up, 803-356-1919. Tell them Bill Gunner sent you. A lot going on over the next three days here with 107.5 The Game. And let's tell you a little bit about what's going on. Tonight, pregame, South Carolina and Alabama baseball in Tuscaloosa. We'll have the pregame right here on 107.5 The Game, 100.3 The Game in Myrtle Beach at 745. First pitch taking place at 8 o'clock. Tomorrow, go by and visit the 12-3 to 3 show. They'll be at Sound and Images live show at Quicker State and Lube. That's right on Bluff Road at I-77. It's a restaurant. It's a travel center, and it's a bowling alley. Go by and hang out with the 12 to 3 show tomorrow at Quicker State and Lube. Quicker Steak. 
steak and lube and that's the sound and images live show and then tomorrow we'll have the baseball game excuse me the, the basketball the women's basketball game starting at 4 30 the pregame show as south carolina gets set to take on indiana in the ncaa sweet 16 that'll be on 98.5 womg there's just a few things taking place Eight zero three four zero four sixty one hundred. That's how you can weigh in in the final moments here of the show. Apologies, we did not mention enough about the uh, laps taking place at Darlington. Jen, you've got some information on that if people want to get out. We mentioned it's a great weekend, a lot going on. Yeah, for sure. But another great thing taking place in Darlington if you want to go. You know, it's it's a lot of fun. I've done it a couple times now. You take a car. It doesn't have to be a, a race car. It just can be your regular car. It could be a, a truck, whatever the case may be. But you get to take a few laps out on the track there at Darlington. And every time they do this, it benefits a different charity. Excuse me. And um, so this time it is benefiting Child and Family Resource Foundation. And it's on Saturday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. You pay $25 and you get to take about three laps around the Lady in Black. So it's it's kind of fun. They do limit you because, you know, I kind of tested it, but um, to about 70, you know, so which seems like it seems like you're going pretty fast, like when you're driving. But then if you go back and look at like a video or something, then it's. Well, gosh, it looks like I'm just putzing around and not going, but you've, it's, it's fun. It really is to, to just get a sense. You find where the bumps are, and, yeah, it's it's a good time. So if you can't go this time, and, and actually they're also going to do a, um, an Easter egg hunt at 1 o'clock in the infield, but um, track laps for charity, check it out. They do it a couple times a year. I know, I know Toyotas were big this weekend. Uh, Toyota Camrys, are those oh, big race oh, cars? Yeah, big that's, race cars, that's yeah. What it is. Big uh, race cars. It is a Camry, yep. Mm -hmm. To handle the, handle the, I, the again, the banking you don't until until you drive it or if you do a tour like i know up in charlotte you can do that tour and then they sit there for a second and it's like okay i can feel this and well it's no it's, it's when we went last year uh -huh. and we broadcast um and where we were at where we started at and you look at the banking that was wild to me you know and i don't i don't know how you two felt jen you're more accustomed to it than i think preston and i but where we were standing there, uh, the the lady, young lady was trying to help us, Peyton. Uh, she was trying to do all the work, and I'm wandering around the track and 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 was out on the track at, what, 6 a.m., still worried about being run over by a speeding mm -hmm. car. But it, you don't notice it on television, and I, I can't imagine. Some In some tracks, you notice it more than others because the banking is different in all tracks. And another great place to kind of get a sense of that is if you go to the – the museum in Charlotte, the NASCAR Museum, Hall of Fame and Museum, um, they actually have an area where they show the different grades of elevation on the banking so you can really see it up close. But, yeah, I, it's I, fun. I just can't imagine driving a, driving your car. All, I mean, I, yeah, what it's like, especially if you're going about 160 miles an hour. And on certain tracks, the, the way the banking is, you have to have a minimum speed or you will slide down like to stay planted to the track. So crazy. like I said, it's, it's the banking isn't quite as much. Um, I don't think there, but it's still, it's fun. Yeah. Sometimes you ought to go do the, the track laps. It's a lot of fun. 803-404-6100. Want to tell you about my good friends, the Ecton Law Firm. You need to call them today if you're having issues with the IRS. The IRS is planning to send out their dreaded notices of intent to levy in 2024. And if you've received this notice, it's your time to call for a free consultation with the Ecton Law Firm. 803-771-9800. They have a local team dedicated to resolving your income or business tax issues for good. They understand the challenges you face, and that's why they're ready to offer you the peace of mind that you deserve. So call the Ecton Law Firm today. Tell them Bill Gunner sent you. 803-771-9800. Your time is limited. You don't want to wait much longer on this. The Ecton Law Firm is there to help you with any tax issues you may be having. Call today and get that free consultation. 803-771-9800. You can visit them on the web, the ectonlawfirm.com. That's E-C-T-O-N lawfirm.com. Tonight, 
It's a great set. Just we we keep talking about. We just talked about the track laps, Preston, the Carolina Cup. We had Toby Edwards on, but tonight NCAA basketball gets going again. Clemson and Arizona get going. You made a bold proclamation in the six o'clock hour. I don't know if you want to make it when the folks are awake at eight, but you just let it. Maybe just let that slide in the six. Yeah, I got called a tater. Uh, one person said that we lost a listener that <laughs> that I could go work for. I was going back to this, uh, going back to this text from much, much earlier where somebody really, really got fired up with me. Uh, this was an anonymous texter. I uh, said, you just lost a listener. Go work oh. for Pickens County Tech, freaking <laughs> tater. I'm kind of pulling for Brad Brunell tonight. Can Brad just Brunell? Remember, that was Bill. That was not Preston. That was, was not Jen. Me. That was, was Bill. Can, you can see my shirt. Look, look, everybody look. Everybody see I am, my shirt. I am in my hey, North. Me. I am in my North Carolina blue also today. Uh, uh, Trader. Did Brad Brunell win, but Clemson not? I don't think that's how it works. That's so. not how it works. Mm-mm. Oh boy! No, Gamecock Larry will get on me tomorrow. Preston, we'll see you in the, the morning. Peeps guys yes, gonna be waiting for you. <laughs> yeah, the Peeps. The peeps <laughs> he's a Tater fan. He's actually a Tater fan. Yeah, I tell you what, pull for one guy. I was pulling for Brad Brunell, and everybody gets all fired up. But, I, you know, if you're going to throw tomatoes at me or whatever, it means, means I'm going to track it into the house. House is going to get all dirty. And then I got to call Zero Res for my spring cleaning. You need to do so as well. With their patented ZR Water Technology, scientifically proven to keep carpets, rugs, tile, upholstery, all insanely clean. And you can find out for yourself. Take advantage of their spring sale. Just mention me, Bill Gunner at 107.5 The Game, and you get three. Three rooms of carpet cleaned for $129 plus a free hallway, 803-262-4020. You can also book online, zeroscolumbia.com. Again, get three rooms of carpet cleaned for $129 plus a free hallway. You just need to mention me, Bill Gunner, at 107.5 The Game when you call, 803-262-4020 or book online, zeroscolumbia.com. Zero rest, spell it backwards or forwards. It's the right way to clean. All right, looking at a bunch of wrecks this morning. We'll start with Berry Hill Road at Fairway Lane, Blythewood Road at Wilson, Harton Street at Taylor Street, Hugh G at Blossom, 20 East at uh, Bushover Road, 20 East at Monticello, 20 East at St. Andrews, R26 
east at St. Andrews Road, Old Cherokee Road, at Old Chapin Road. Your weather outlook for today. Well, it's going to be 66 for a high, but crowd, uh, clouds decreasing. 20% chance of rain for Friday and Saturday. Um, it's going to be mostly sunny. Uh, 0% chance of rain, so should get those baseball games in with no problem. Sunday, clouds move back in, but still a 0% chance of rain. 72 uh, for a high on Friday, 77 Saturday. Nine o'clock on your Thursday morning. Welcome in. It is the extra point here on the game. Tyler Head along with you. Cap and Dave finally back after we gave him a couple of days off. See, we, we do uh, allow Captain Dave to leave the producer studio from time to time. So he's back in. Appreciate Ed Bird being in here the, uh, the last couple of days. Getting in to a busy sports weekend starting uh, today. Obviously, we have South Carolina baseball as they get set to take on Alabama for a three-game set. A women's team going to be in action tomorrow for the Sweet 16 game against Alabama. The uh, men's Sweet 16 gets rolling tonight. Got a lot of good games coming up. And today is also opening day of Major League Baseball. Now, if you're a Braves fan like myself, a little bit of a damper got put on today um, as yesterday after.